is what you've been waiting for. This is what it's all about. The rivalry, you look at a hundred years of it. There's a lot of hate and heart for each other. Both teams undefeated. I don't think it gets any bigger and better than this. Our guys are ready for that challenge. It's going to be a good one for sure. The spotlight of college football is on the Red River rivalry. It's something that we don't take lightly. This is what we do. This is what we're on now. making his way up here from the game day set. Ale Rowe joins us on the field. You know, every one of these games is precious, but when these teams are undefeated and they have championship dreams, it just feels a little bit bigger and more important. That's what we got here today. Two football teams that are really complete. You've got two quarterbacks and Dylan Gabriel for Oklahoma, but you put you were for Texas playing at a very high level and surrounded by playmakers who like their matchups against the opposing defensive backs. And then, of course, there's the all-important ferocity of the trenches when these two teams meet. The line of scrimmage very often decides things. Here is Gabriel, his 43rd start, but this is the biggest moment of his career. Couldn't go a year ago. Concussion protocol knocked him out. And the man from Hawaii, the lefty who can spin the ball so beautifully, has been in the zone so far this season. Well, it's been a dozen years since these teams were undefeated, and since 55, it's exactly dead even. 33 wins apiece. 5-0 for the first time since 08. That was a memorable season for both programs. Dallas has hosted the last 95 years. This is the final chapter, of course, as Big 12 Conference are both off to the SEC next season. Holly Rowe has a ringside seat for this one. She's with Steve Sarkeesian. Well, Coach, there's been a lot of hype all week. This atmosphere is electric. How do you want your team to harness it productively? I just wanted to have fun today. You know, these guys put in a lot of hard work, had a great week of preparation, wanted to enjoy the moment, play good football. You have a couple of key guys that we're waiting on injury for. How do you see Sanders performing today and Jalen Watt? Uh, JT Sanders is good to go. Ryan Watts won't be able to go today. Thank you so much, Coach. Right, thank you. Great day for football, isn't it? It's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, temperatures in the low 60s. It's going to be in the 60s throughout the game. Kind of a breezy day. You're watching a presentation of the Big 12 on ESPN. Kirk Kirksey has made his way through the people and is up here. Pretty, pretty good time. Yeah, 153 to the uh, elevator. Oh, we set the table a, a few minutes ago, Kirk. But as you know, this is, you can feel it on the field. It's one of those games where the emotional and physical fuel is overflowing for every guy. How do you not let that take over in a, in a game this big? I, I give Texas an advantage there because of the experience that they have, not just this year, but this is a team that they've been through a lot. You know, think about uh, the losses that have piled up over the last two or three years, some of the embarrassment moments that they had. And this is now a veteran team that survived that. Oklahoma in the 
second year with Brent Venables. This is new for them. They got embarrassed last year on this field. I think they've used that as motivation to get them ready to play and avenge that loss. What happens on this field just resonates forever in this rivalry. Moments so powerful through the years. And sometimes today, keep an eye on the small moments because they can be magnified and have a huge impact on the outcome. 50-50 is always the crowd. To the left side, as you watch this, the burnt orange nation. The crimson of the Sooner nation on the right side. OU won the toss. And Brent Venables, as he does, deferred. So Texas will get the football first. has been so calm he was quiet very introspective in our meeting last night but he knows what it takes to get his mind right for this Keelan Robinson back to return this one Zach Schmidt very solid kick for the Sooners to get it started Red River number 119 Robinson drifts up and he'll have a chance from the 11 Good coverage. The Sooners flew down the field behind that high kickoff, and Ewers backed up the 19-yard line as he comes out for his 16th start. He's only 20 years old. Seems like he's been around longer. Got a taste of it last year in a mismatch. He knows the challenge against this OU defense is a lot bigger today. No doubt about it. I, I really thought there was a potential face mask there on Oklahoma on, the, on this kickoff, but keep in mind, you mentioned a 50-50 split. Texas will start the ball and Ewers right in the heart of the OU side of the field with that crowd being a factor. Jonathan Brooks had a great first five games at tailback as he get the ball immediately to Xavier Worthy. Two years ago here he scored from 75 yards out on the first play. This time he takes a loss. I, I think Woody Washington, one of the vets of this Oklahoma defense, it was a part of the loss. What a job of setting the tone. I know it's the first play, big deal, but it's a screen where he just throws the potential block on him by Jatavian Sanders and makes a big tackle for a loss. Both sets of DBs will be tested in coverage and in run support today. Ewers has the football, gets it out, almost stood. He did throw a pick right to Gentry Williams who jumped the route. A huge mistake for Ewers, and OU will take over in the red zone. Uh, Ewers gets confused here, Chris. He had two slants. Oklahoma does a good job, and what an unbelievable job by Gentry Williams jumping this route. Watch the hesitation by Ewers. He's unsure, he's unsure. He throws it anyway, and a heck of a job by Williams undercutting that, getting in front of Mitchell, anticipating that slant. Great job by OU's defense on these first two plays, and now what field position to start the game for Dylan Gabriel. Picks in back-to-back -back games for Williams. Marcus Major is the back to the right of Dylan Gabriel. He's got the football in the flat. Gets a block on the edge from Stockner, the tight end, but Texas shuts him down. There's <laughs> hopping going on out there. Dylan Gabriel, a quarterback that did not get a chance to play in this game. Second year in this system. They are going to go really fast today against Texas. Gabriel, who can run it, takes off, has some space. Actually, it's a, it's a Farouk in the backfield there, a Wildcat snap, so early wrinkle here, solid game. And Farouk, receiver here, just kind of, as you say, a little wrinkle to ke catch Texas off guard with the tempo. And third and one, they hammer forward and get a first and goal. Do you guys talk about this? It's much like what Tennessee was doing last year with Hendon Hooker and that Josh Heupel scheme. Very similar style with Jeff Levy. It is so fast. You practice it all week. So difficult to simulate and get ready to see it until you see it for the first time. Gabriel, long throw. Cutting in was Andrew Anthony, not quite on the same page. Terrence Brooks in coverage. They don't have Ryan Watts, their excellent corner today. And they'll test that corner who is in. And one of the things he you got to deal with is not just the tempo, but OU is going to get the ball out of Dylan Gabriel's hands as fast as they can. They have a great deal of respect, as they should, for Texas's front and their ability to apply pressure. 
That ball gets out quick. Gabriel takes off. Darts up the middle and scores. Sooners draw first blood quickly. Cashing in the pick. selling this and then follows his right guard Metallier watch him wait patiently allow those blocks to establish themselves on that left side good job by Stogner the, the tied in on that left creating that wall cleared it open for the guard to come around but good patience there by Dylan Gabriel to let that form in front of him Oklahoma could not have imagined a better start they get the takeaway, just the second pick that Ewers has thrown this season. And Gabriel takes it to the end zone for the fifth time as a runner. Fourth in the last three games. Defense with a big interception. Remember, they were torched a year ago. They come back, get the turnover, give Dylan Gabriel great field position, and the Sooners cash in here early in Dallas. Aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear, celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road, Goodyear? More driven. Less than two minutes in, the Sooners up by a touchdown, and Kirk Quinn Ewers, who tried it out a few minutes ago to start this game, has got to shake off a terrible mistake. It's the second pick that he's thrown, by far the most costly. to return it from the four. Side steps one man and barrels forward out across the 28. So what does Sarkeesian tell him? Well, the one thing you rely on is the experience of last year, and he had moments like that, and that's where he, we all feel he's really grown. You know, he's got to settle into this game. Sark talked this week about not being emotional. A lot of emotions in his stadium, a lot of emotions with the players on the field. His quarterback has got to be beyond that, which is a real strength of his. So now he's got to bounce back from adversity. It's what you do. You're going to have enough football in his life to know that put that one behind him and move forward. It's Brooks. Short game, plugged up by Ethan Downs. This Oklahoma defense with a whole bunch of fresh faces, a bunch of transfer portal guys, some young players they've worked in. They've improved a lot through the first five games from last year's nightmare. Viewers back, look downfield, and he'll be swarmed. A short sack, nobody open, and the pocket collapsed around him. Well, Dejon Terry got him. Yeah, this is the area that, that Oklahoma has improved the most and put a lot of work into improving is the defensive line and the ability to get after the quarterback. We have an offensive lineman down for Texas. This is an experienced veteran offensive line and played a lot of football together. That looks like it may be Jake Majors, the, the center. Well, he is an enormously important figure in this team, a third-year starter who is the quarterback of the O-line. We'll step aside as they take a look at Jake. The All-State Red River Rivalry on ABC is presented by Head & Shoulders. Make every wash count. In part by Allstate, your good hands. And Chick-fil-A, the new honey pepper pimento chicken sandwich has arrived at Chick-fil-A. Enjoy it for a limited time. Well, here's the sack by Dejon Terry. As he fell, he fell on the back of number 65 for Texas, the center, Jake Majors, who walked slowly to the sidelines. Here's another look. And it, 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 again, one of the mainstays of this offensive line, the left leg there gets rolled up on every offensive lineman's worst fear. On third and 13, Ewers just flips a little fluttering pass to Brooks out of the backfield. And 
had too much work to do to get there. It's tackled by Danny Stutzman, the top tackler in this conference a year ago. And the Sooners get off the field with a stop. Bathroy does a good job. You see him almost go down 80, but he forces him out of that pocket. Man, this Oklahoma defense, to think about where they were a year ago, 49 points allowed in this game, almost 600 yards, 6 yards a carry, 36 first downs. These first two drives for Texas, they have been relentless. Uh -oh. And now... Tumbling down into uh, Oklahoma territory is Jordan Whittington, the wide receiver. Sarkeesian feeling something had to change early, and he rolls the dice curve. You're exactly right. A late shift. Oklahoma not seeing that, so they were able to outflank them on the edge, and he's able to get the yards that he needs. You see it all the way out here. Oklahoma did not adjust. It was a late break of the huddle. Oklahoma caught completely off guard. I love your point about know it's own territory he had to do something to create some a spark and a little bit of momentum Whittington playing his fourth edition of the Red River rivalry makes a big play in our viewers he's been harassed a lot early tried to flip it to Brooks kind of a sidearm throw but Ethan Downs made him uncomfortable that time yeah, how, how about that I thought he was across the line of scrimmage, maybe just barely behind. It was very, very close. You see the line of scrimmage at about the 48. Look at the pressure. A lot of good coverage downfield. Boy, his whole body looked like it was across the line of scrimmage. If anything, maybe just a foot staying behind the line. But no flag. It just takes one part of your body to avoid the penalty, and they do. And this is the kind of run that Brooks has executed a lot this season. The quick burst up the middle, well blocked. Key Lawrence stopped him. Yeah, Hayden Connor, left guard, nice little counter play here along with Gunnar Helm. And now they're showing Oklahoma some of their own medicine going fast. Sooners defense not lined up, but they close down Brooks very quickly. He stopped at the 40. Gentry Williams, who had the big pick, makes the tackle. And now another decision for Sarkeesian. It's fourth down. Trying to catch him off guard. Oklahoma did a pretty good job again up front. Oh, that defensive line is penetrating. Very active in this game. And with Majors out, Connor Robertson in. Savion Red in wildcat position. C.J. Baxter, the freshman, is to his right. And a throw across the middle. And it's caught. Complete Sarkeesian with another big gamble. Now the ball's loose at the end of the play. And it's ruled a fumble recovery by Oklahoma. Gunner Helm, the tight end, caught the pass. And then fumbled at the end. And Sabian Red is known as, as you said, the Wildcat. He's a runner. Hasn't shown this a lot. He's a running back. But he's out with the defense communicating. Hey, well, he's in. He's in. So let's get our eyes up here. They blitz this backer. Look at the defense collapses down. So it's a great call by Sark. One step ahead of the defense of Brent Venables. You can see the ball almost comes out. Boy, it might. His right knee may have been down. Bring in Bill Lamagne. Texas crowd reacting. Ooh, they Bill. saw it on the big screen. Bill, what, what do you see from this play? This is an enormous call early in this game. Yeah, they're doing a review on it right now, but the, the knee's down, and yep. then the ball comes out. Replay's going to reverse this. They keep the football. Bill, how oh, he bobbled that in his grasp right there, Bill. It's kind of starting to lose control at that moment. Look, he started to lose the football. They're, they're trying to knock it out right there, but good job of showing strength to hold on to it. Now he's got it secured, and as Bill said, mm, it's really close. It really is. It's a barn burner. And it's a barn burner. You usually go what? With the call on the field? You have to go with the call on the field. Richard Brown is the replay official for this Big 12 crew. Is it clear enough, the evidence, that he still had control to overturn the call on the field, Bill? If you were in that position, what would you do? Well, again, the ruling on the field is a fumble and a recovery. So they have to have indisputable video evidence to say, no, he was down in full control. So they have to go with the call on the field in that case. I mean, what a seat to Sarkeesian in his own den. Fake punt. They get it, face another fourth down. 
Go to a wrinkle and throw a pass. It's all going to come down to whether or not they feel that ball was slightly moving before that knee touched. Well, they uh, review this. So we apologize. We're rolling with some serious technical issues in the first minute of this broadcast. We hope our, uh, our crew will do a great job, but uh, it's a power issue. And our, our crew is as good as any trying to get things in terms of the cameras and microphones back up and running. The last view that I just saw from the replay booth, I've got firm control of the ball with the knee down. Okay. But you went back and forth a couple times, didn't you? That, that's, that's your that's final verdict. Yeah, but it, I'm it, going with it. Now he just saw a, a different shot that he feels better about. What a call this is, whichever way it goes. I mean, everything going Oklahoma's way early. The fake punt to keep the drive alive. A potential conversion here. Like I said, the ball gets punched right there by Billy Bowman. He's able to keep control of it, and then it starts to come out. But it's all about the judgment if the knee was down before it came out. The knee's down right there. I mean, you could certainly make a case he still has control with two hands, but it's, it is a kind of a split second, literally. How about, how about Sarko, the fake punt in the fourth down with the Wildcat quarterback? Then, After further review, wasn't the ruling on the field, that was the ruling from the booth. But this is enormous. So Texas, with a couple of gambles, is set up at the 14-yard line. What a sequence of plays. What a start to this 119th River rivalry. Texas working toward their crowd should have the benefit of a relatively quiet series as they try to tie the score here. And here's the reverse, another wrinkle on the end around of Keelan Robinson. Sark is showing a lot in this first 20 plays that he comes in scripted, and he's been off script a couple times. I, I think he's had to adjust because I think what surprised him is he, he had a lot of respect for what Brent Venables has done through recruiting to, to see this defensive line. They were they punished him a year ago, but Brent Venables in his second year, he's got different folks to work with up front and they are winning the line of scrimmage Sark's forced to get the ball out away from that front Robinson and Brooks flanking yours and a throw Sanders tipped up in the air and intercepted the second takeaway Kendall Dolby comes up with the pick Billy Bowman batted it up in the air he batted it up in the air and he went right through Sanders' chest in the process he's the veteran back there Might be a defenseless player getting hit up high. Ball is loose, but he hits him clean below the the neck area. So it's a clean hit, well timed. Ball goes up into the air. Dolby's there to pick it off. Junior safety from Denton is a big playmaker. He made an interception in the fourth quarter. A tight game at Cincinnati ended the Bearcats' hopes of winning that game. Then last week, third play of the game, it's a pick six against Iowa State, and now this huge hit on one of the big weapons in this Texas offense, Sanders, and Oklahoma, two takeaways. Texas offense only had two turnovers all season. Now a wrinkle from this side is Gabriel, the quarterback, is split out wide. Stepping under center. And now he'll move back and take the pitch. It's Farouk running left. A lot of movement by the Sooners just trying to affect the communication of Texas. They're in play position. A major stutter step that'll be swallowed up from behind after a short game. So Oklahoma backed up this possession and, and Texas defense doing a good job so far. They've created a third and 13. Aaron Sorrell and that stop. And now it's super loud for Oklahoma's offense in this end. Yeah. Here's 
Gabriel from his own end zone flips it high and incomplete. Tried to find Drake Stoops on the cross. And the Longhorns force a three and out. But when they spread you so wide horizontally, it creates great vertical seams. Look at all the space to work for for Gabriel. Going to get the ball out fast, but with the blitz coming, it's just a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Stoops against Thompson. But an errant pass, never a chance there on third down. And Xavier Worthy waits in Oklahoma territory to receive the punt of Josh Plaster. And it's blocked, and Texas scores a touchdown. Could you ask for more wild stuff in the first few minutes of this game? Malik Muhammad is a true freshman at corner made to play. There is a flag on the field. I think that's a celebration flag. This, this score will count, but it's probably an excessive celebration. Texas, the way this game is gone. I mean, this is vintage OU Texas. This is the Cotton Bowl. This is what it's about, right? I know, man. We've seen a lot of these games. I've seen very few that have started off quite like this. This is wild. He's telling him probably you could take this penalty, maybe either the kickoff or the extra point. You know, special teams, as you said, always have a way of factoring in. Long fills a touchdown after the play. We've already seen Baldwin. He's blocked two punts this year for Oklahoma. We figured they might have a special team's edge coming in, but look at the play by Malik Muhammad. Muhammad ends up pouncing on top of the football. Good job there by Crawford to get his hand on it. Crawford is one of the gunners. He's one of the best special teams players. Tremendous job. They, they kind of let him run right through. And Muhammad there to make it a touchdown and not a safety. Whoa, get your breath here. Six minutes in in Dallas. Some wild stuff. Seven apiece. Kevin Nagani, Dan Orlovsky, the studio update, undefeated Maryland, striking first at Ohio State. Talia Tungavailoa here, Dan. Really nice job. Gets from one to two, sees the slot double, gives Prather a chance up high. Look at the left-handed one arm. Seven-nothing Terps leading the fourth-ranked Buckeyes back to Chris and Herbie. Kevin, Dan, thank you. A lot going on on this noon Eastern time window. Let's say that. Wilder than what's going on here. Two interceptions. Get a fake punt. Then at a fourth and one, resulting in a fumble that was overturned, then a block punt for a touchdown. That's that's all. That's all you've missed if you're just joining us. <laughs> Lefty Stone to kick it away. Farouk, who's featured in a variety of roles here in the early going, is the returner. And into the wind, he's going to have a chance from about the 14-yard line. And now a trick on the on the return. The ball is flipped back, and this is penalty. Sportsmanlike penalty on Texas's bench. They end up kicking that off from their own 20. So there's a lot of room to work with for the Sooners. And another, why not? Little razzle dazzle from both sides and big yards with Texas out of position all the way up to their own 44 yard line. So special teams from both sides impacting this game. Both coaches feeling in an adventurous mood today. Every advantage they can try to gain in a matchup that we think is pretty darn even yeah. across the board. And if it weren't for Sark and, and of course, Jeff Banks, the special teams coach, uh, Texas would be down. Banks with the, the fake punt call on fourth and five, and then the block punt is one of the best in the country. Came with Sark from Alabama. Well, we're going to bring in Bill Lamagne again because Richard Brown, the replay official, is going to look at whether or not this little pass on the kickoff return was a forward pass which wouldn't be allowed, Bill. They're looking at the release point and then the touch point. Uh, you know, live on the field, I didn't think it was a questionable call at all, but watching it here on replay, again, it's a barn burner how tight this is. But and the ball is coming forward, right, from where the receiver is. He almost has to to get it to him. See, it's released right there just released across it. the 20. Yeah, and look where he catches it. Forward pass. Yeah. So that'll be a spot foul and a five-yard penalty. So a spot foul from the 22 would move it to the 17 if they take it away. That's about a compared to the five-yard difference. Yeah, 44 yards from the 44-yard line. 
So if you're scoring at home, two Lamagne barn burners for the replay official it's already. Fitting. It's fitting for this game. <laughs> Hey, a buddy of mine texted me and said we should call replay cheaters proof. That's one of those things that you practice and you wonder if the coach is ever going to call it. you got to execute the timing perfectly. Root flipped the ball up in the air, but just a little bit too After soon. After further review, the pitch was forward from the 20-yard line. Another forward pass. Five-yard penalty for that spot. It will be first and 10 for the 15. What do you make, Kirk, of both head coaches? You know, being the, this adventurous this soon. I, sometimes you save it, right? You, you wait to a, maybe the second half. I think these coaches realize the importance of, of trying to get out early. We haven't even really gotten into the flow of this game of Jeff Levy's offense and the tempo and Texas's strength, the defensive line, who's going to win the battle. We haven't even had really a chance to get into this game because there's been so much back and forth. So many unusual play calls. Say it again. So from the 15, Major is the bat. Texas rounds the line, and Major's going to be knocked down after a short game. It's an Oklahoma running game that can be effective in spots, Kirk, but do you really expect them to be able to move Texas's fine front out of the way this afternoon? Well, they're going to have to wear them down with the tempo. That's their only chance. This has not been an explosive running offense. It's really been more about quick pass and trying to make plays with Dylan Gabriel and these receivers. Fluke in motion, a long throw to Stoops. Got a block on the edge, and he's muscle on the bounds. Right near the marker. Really good block by Nick Anderson out in front of him to give him that chance to get to the first. Play fast when they move to six. Gabriel hit as he throws. Hit from the back, and the ball falls incomplete. That was big Tavondre Sweat with an interior power move. Yeah, and that's what you expect to see from, from this front. You know, that's why Oklahoma wants to go fast, because they don't want to deal with that. I mean, that's a large man at 362 pounds that has some twitch, believe it or not. With one arm, he just shoved the lineman back and affected the quarterback. Gabriel escapes the pocket now. Left team looking to make a play. Two hands left, and he won't get there. Pursued and chased by the true freshman, Anthony Hill, who made a big impact in the win at Alabama. And that was an unusual move by Dylan Gabriel. He, he, he gets back in the pocket. He kind of ducks. Could hide that, in there. Yeah, I don't, and he had an open receiver in the slot to his left if he was able to get the ball out quickly and for root. But because of the size, that's been a big emphasis with Texas. Dylan Gabriel's listed at 5'11". I don't even know if he's that tall. So not only penetrating and getting to him, but getting a push from Collins and Murphy and Sweat to just get into his view and take away those throwing lanes. Back to the noisy end in third and 11. Tawee Walker is the back. Gabriel straight back to throw. Has time. Deflected and then caught by Anthony. But it's short of the first down. So again, they get the pressure. That was sweat. We got his hand on the ball. I got to see what this vertical is. There's no way the big fella. He did. He got off the ground pretty nicely at 362. Big man getting his hand on it. Big man wrecking that series for Oklahoma. So here's Josh Plaster who just had it plastered back in his face from his own end zone for the second punt. Worthy waiting at the 25 if the punter can get it off this time. Texas peels back and plays for a return. It's a very ugly line drive kick. A flag is down and a roll dead at the Texas 42. Wow, an adventure for the punter Plaster. 26-yarder. Flag is on the far sideline near the line of scrimmage. If he's trying to kick it rugby style, Kirk, he just bounced it along the ground. It was it certainly looked, it, it sure looked like he was. He took a few, you know, two or three steps off to his right. Usually they do kick those or punt those balls much lower and they just wait for the roll. He's talking to the Texas sideline. The special teams will play a, a key role, but maybe not this key this early. Talking about the flag that was back with the line of scrimmage. Five guys in the backfield. Illegal formation, kicking team. Number 10 was covered up as an eligible number and then shifted to an eligible position. That's a five-yard penalty from the end of the play. First game. Sets Texas up with a 47. If you're good yours, 
you can take a deep breath. That pick cost him seven points, but the Longhorns, with their own special teams play, has steadied it now. And that, now you really get into your game plan, but again, at the line of scrimmage, think Texas would win that, but they have not been able to yet. No, whoops. Not much room stuff right at the line of scrimmage. Holly? Well, guys, Jake Majors, the most important part of this Texas offensive line is in the locker room. They took him off the field, examined the bones and his left ankle and foot. He tried to push off on it. It was not working, so they've taken back inside. It's a huge deal. He's the most effective communicator up front. He sets the protections, the lines. He is such an integral piece, and the guy replacing him right now is a freshman, a redshirt freshman. It is a big storyline to watch, guys. It's Connor Robinson. Now, you're right, Majors has a tremendous calm about him, a great center's personality. The viewers counts on what they do. This is Winnington on the near side, makes the catch into Oklahoma territory. And that was a much better job of giving him some time. Peyton Connor coming down to help Robertson there in, in pass protection. At least he had time to play, not able to be executed downfield to pick up a first down, but it's just one of the few times he's been able to sit there and survey the coverage. Adonai Mitchell to the left of the formation. Ewers is going to fake the pump and then dive forward, and they will move the sticks. And another tactical scramble by Ewers. Done a lot more of that this year very effectively. Uh, it's a good job. He wanted to release it, but he senses pretty good coverage here by Stutzman. He gets into that throwing lane, so he's got to come off of it. Playing with tempo. Flag is down before the snap, and it's a false start. So that's the other part of the equation when you try to get the defense Offense. disorganized. Five-yard five penalty. Still first down. That was Mitchell. And then Mitchell just flinching just a bit while Winnington was in motion. You're right about the frantic stuff going on here. Neither offense really been able to set it. We haven't got a look really yeah. at what's going on other than OU's defensive front is playing well. Yeah. Play fake, far pitch, and slipping a tackle is Whittington, but a short gain as the pursuit caught up to him. Just, just cannot say enough about how different things are in year two for, for Venables and Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator. You know, if you're an OU fan, when they hire Brent Venables, this is what you envision. This this is the defense that you think about when you think of Brent Venables. A, a defense that flies around, moves around, confuses a quarterback, confuses protection. Ewers hesitates, and that's going to be fatal for him today. He does work his way free. John Terry held on for dear life. It's another sack for the Sooner front. Again, that's what we, we just talked about is, is showing one thing and going to another. Watch good coverage downfield. So the front and the coverage marrying one another. So Ewers, it's not just the, the pass rush. It's the confusion with good coverage downfield. Ewers forced to hold on to the football. And then by, that, by, by doing that, you give the defensive front time to get to him. Now it's Oklahoma with a key guy down on the field. Dejon Terry, the nose tackle, who made the sack of yours and the play that injured Jake Majors is now being looked at by the training staff for Oklahoma. If you look at Terry and Ford, Lacey, Laulu, I mean, they, they've got four transfer portals of guys that have come in and, and made a difference and added depth. This is where we are. This is the first throw that Ewers had. It was an interception and it allowed Oklahoma to get on the board early with Dylan Gabriel. And give Texas credit. They came back. They looked like they were going to drive and put points on the board. Interception. Defense does their job, forces the punt, and Jeff Fake's unit comes up with that block and a touchdown to tie it up. In the middle of all that, a fake punt and Sarkeesian call that worked. Third and 19. Texas, the brink of squandering a great opportunity with field position. U.S. has a lot of space, but a long way to go, and just has to flip it away. This Texas offensive line is missing.
missing their center is having a hard time protecting the quarterback right now. They are, and Ewers, you know, a quarterback that I think came on to the, the stage against Alabama and played so well. I think everybody around the country is really excited about Texas and this offense and its potential. But OU is fired up. He is 5 of 9, only 12 yards, 2 picks, and he's been sacked twice, not to mention all the hurries. Sanborn will try to pin Oklahoma deep. Gavin Freeman, a five foot eight sophomore, standing back at the Oklahoma eight. Sanborn boots it high. He's kicking into the wind, and the fair catch is made by Freeman. So Oklahoma begins at the 12 yard line. Well, tomorrow, a Sunday NFL countdown. We'll see how Christian McCaffrey has been inspired by Bruce Lee. In a Monday night football in Vegas, the Raiders host the Packers, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific, Aiden and Eli on ESPN2. The Packers lost to the Lions. They did. Lions are real. Well, they're packed up deep in their own territory again. Special teams impacting this game beyond the obvious. OU wants first downs, and they want to crank the tempo. It's the back, Tawi Walker in motion. Gabriel took a quick peek and then just runs it up the middle. We're going to have to keep a spy or someone focused on him. He's heard every opponent running the football. Well, but, but Texas thinks a big key in this game is their defensive line being outnumbered because of the formations with the receivers. You have to spread yourself out, but if you can stay with fewer numbers in that box and still get away with it, he picked up five on the first down now. Walker, who's 5'9", but he's built like a tank. Look at the power there. 216, and he seems even bigger than that. It's a first down. I, I don't know how he got that. I mean, he, he was met maybe two or three yards short of the first down, but that power allows him to fight for those last couple yards to get him out of the shadows there of their own goal line. He's very thick. He's been breaking tackles throughout first part of the season is OU offensive line for not creating huge creases not many yards before contact so it's up to the backs and Walker majors it to make guys miss yeah this line it feels like with three transfer portal guys they're still kind of gelling there's pressure off the left Amber straight ahead by Walker who shows that power makes it third and medium here they'll need about four and a half we've got three guys guiding the right tackle from TCU, the right guard, Matuyer is from Cal, the left tackle, Rouse from Stanford. And the teams they have played, nothing close to what they're facing oh. today. Cincinnati's front gave them a tough time. It was a workmanlike win on the road, but Texas another level up from that. Majors the back on third and three. And the snap gets away from Gabriel. Wasn't looking for it. Picks it up, tries to make something happen, and just heaves it into the bench. Avoids what could have been a disastrous play. Now he's looking off to his right, setting the motion for his receivers, and the ball is snapped by Rain. Look at him, he's looking off to the right, and by the time he claps for the ball, remember, remember where they are on the field. That's the toughest part of this stadium for this offensive line because it's down with the horns in. What a job by Gabriel, sense of presence of mind there to just come back and pick up the ball instead of giving up on the play, throws it away. Second time that's happened this year. Ray not on the same page. You saw Gabriel looking at his hand as he comes off. A flag is down as Texas may have roughed. Class through the putter, another impactful special teams play. If it's the 15-yard variety, it's a first down. B.J. Allen got in there. What else can happen? And special teams alone. Leg is extended. Running into, of course, is a five-yard penalty. Defense That's what it number is. Seven, five-yard penalty. The yard results in the first down. It's enough to make it. Cleveland Robinson there. Did his best to avoid contact, but just brushed him. And that's all because Gabriel Kirk was able to round up that, that early snap and make something of it. If, if they take a loss, their back way up, penalty like that wouldn't have made a difference. The incompletion kept it a fourth and short, and now the Sooners with fresh downs here from the 34. A 
up the play fake. Gabriel backpedals and launches downfield for Jaleel Farrell, who makes a catch at the Texas 21. He beat Jalen Catalan, the safety, our first downfield play today. Well, this is a matchup they want. Catalan is known more as a thumper, and they're able to get downfield, create that one one-on-one -on -one matchup with Farouk. Nice job of locating the matchup, and Gabriel puts it out in front of him where he can run under the football. 43-yard gain. This is Walker hammering to the right. An area of big improvement this season for Gabriel throwing the ball downfield. Doesn't matter if his hand is leading. It's, of course, his non-throwing hand, but he's got a power with the left. Got a power through. Didn't affect that deep ball very much. What a good job by Jeff Levy. That's what he does. He spreads you out horizontally to take shots vertically. Walker breaks the first tackle, but is spun down behind line of scrimmage by Jalen Ford, the leader of this Longhorn defense who sets the tone. One of the more instinctive linebackers you'll, you'll see in college football. And another player down. Stop the clock here. 39 seconds remaining in a frantic opening quarter. Dallas would play this 119 times. I can't imagine too many first quarters with more wild stuff happening. Looks like it's Jalen Catalan, safety there, who just got beat deep on that ball who's down on the field. And it's third and ten for Oklahoma, so they make the deep throw get set up in position but now face a, a third and long but if you're if you're not familiar with what Brent Venables is doing offensively it's see you can see Catalan is is sitting up now what he did is he hired Jeff Levy and Jeff Levy is very much like you watched last year with Tennessee want to go tempo want to spread you out and and want to take some shots by getting those one-on-one -on -one chances Catalan on the tackle of Walker, you can see he kind of rolled over. And he is on his feet, but limping heavily. And Derek Williams is a true freshman in the Louisiana who backs him up. Talked about the importance of majors in the offensive line. The importance of Catalan in the secondary is enormous. He's just a, a big playmaker. And the guy who's kind of the glue back there, and now a true freshman steps in for him. Jeff Levy has got picked up on this third and ten. Blood in the pants of the quarterback. Texas not showing pressure in this third down. They don't bring it. Gabriel from the pocket, a long throw to the far sidelines and a diving attempt. Anthony, does he have it in bounds? Yes, he does. You see the accuracy and the arm strength of Gabriel. And it's a long throw for any quarterback. What an accurate throw. And a heck of a job by the transfer from Michigan, Anthony, to get that left foot down. I don't know. They're going to they stop playing. They're going to maybe take a peek at this one, too. The look that we just saw, unless he bobbled the ball going out of bounds. I mean, he got his foot down Previous for sure. For the review, the it's a great look at it right there. You see his left foot down. Now, did he lose control of the ball after after we lose him there? Let's see if it's a better look here. That's the only thing that could prevent this from being a catch. No, it looks like it. he has it. What an effort. What a throw. Left foot's down. Right arm seems to have that football locked in pretty good. Yep, that's the catch. Uh, like I said, the only thing is if he bowled it after, but doesn't appear that he did it all. He didn't lose control. He was more perplexed than anybody. He looked around like, they stopped that? I, I had that. But this, this drives you crazy when they stopped for review because Oklahoma's offense was cranking. They were up there ready to run a play. First down from the 11-yard line. Now Texas gets a chance to take a breather and, 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 and maybe it, coach up Derek Williams, who's been thrown into the fire. Yeah, freshman. Yeah, that's where I was going with Oklahoma's style of offense. Again, it's much like Tennessee with Hendon Hooker and what they're doing this year with Joe Melton. It's fast, fast, fast. You see Auburn, uh, any of these teams, they, anytime they can slow an offense down, they'll, they'll have a guy that's, you know, that 
potentially has an, an injury where he'll just go down even if it's not an injury. Injury in quotes. Yes. And so you're right. They want to go as fast as they can. And things like this slow down Dylan Gabriel and the rhythm of this offense. There was a slight bobble of the ball, but he got his right toe down just before the knee hit out of bounds. So he did regain control. Wow. I didn't see any bobble. Good for you seeing that. Weird start, but now Gabriel has found some rhythm there with the deep ball and the great throw down completion. Walker and a heavy traffic. It's just hard to move those 300 pounders in the middle. That's where the big boys, that's where the big boys are inside there. That's tough sled. Well, what a first quarter in Dallas. Oklahoma threatening, but it's seven apiece in the Red River rivalry. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Set for the second quarter of the All-State Red River Rivalry here on ABC, presented by Head and Shoulders. Sooners threatening here in the 7-7 game, second and nine. Walker is the back, along with Drake Stoops for now in the backfield to the left of Dylan Gabriel. Plenty of wrinkles already. Now Stoops goes in motion. It didn't look like Gabriel was ready for the snap. He was surprised by it. Handled it. Hands off to Walker. I tell you what, man, he, he's getting tested back there with these snaps. He, he and Rain better get on the same page. That ball came back again where his athletic ability saves that potentially from that ball bouncing off his shoulder pad. So again, keep in mind where they are in the field. Loudest part of this stadium for this OU offense and that O-line. First snap for Gavin Sachuk, who's the back who motions out. Empty backfield now. Texas rushes for Gabriel. Thinks about Stanley. He'll take off. Now flips to the end zone. Almost to an interception. Tracking across was Jaron Thompson, the safety. Wow. Gabriel lucky to avoid a pick there. He really is. He wanted to go off to his right, right here. Safety's taken away completely. And then he has to come back. See, he looks right. Now he's going to work back over here. Once he makes that decision, look at the eyes of the Texas safety. He reads him perfectly, and he brings him over there to make that play. And both these defenses, Kirk, have some experienced and savvy safeties will make the quarterback pay for a bad decision. Chip shot here for Zach Schmidt. And that is a straightforward special teams play. We've had very few so far. That was a heck of a drive by Oklahoma. They took it 78 yards in 13 plays, four and a half minutes. Back on top by three. Kevin Nagani back in studio with this update. LSU didn't bring their jackets or defense so far in Columbia, bro. No, number 40, the linebacker, Whit Wicks out of position, and Missouri made him pay easy walk-in touchdown. Cody shredded the touchdown run, then Brady Cookie is a pair of touchdown passes. Really nice play called a tight end slid across, defender didn't cover. Where is this LSU defense? Hey, everybody's yeah. been saying that, right? Right now, they're down. The home Tigers up 22-7 to over on ESPN. Chris Herbie, back to you. Mizzou is sneaky undefeated team, huh? Yeah. <sighs> Picked him on the board. Oh, okay. feeling good about that. Let's see if it holds up. Schmidt with a line drive kick. And Kevin Robinson is going to bring it out. And breaks a couple tackles. Knocked down at the 15-yard line. That's where yours will set up. Well, since the Big 12 was formed in 96, I have like trivia question asks you. Which player has the most career rushing touchdowns in games between Oklahoma and Texas? So an entire career? Yeah. So, so like a Adrian Peterson, DeMarco Murray kind Andy of Williams was kind of at the beginning Ricky of Williams. years in the Big 12. Yeah. Jamal Charles. A lot of good games. A lot of good opportunities to, to be right. And off when he left is C.J. Baxter, the freshman who was the, the game one starter, but then injured his ribs and had to miss some time. But he's powerful, instinctive, shows you why he's got the five-star label. For sure, Ewers right now doesn't have a completion beyond the line of scrimmage. 0 for 3. 
Looking for his first one here, and the high throw is caught for a first down across the 30-yard line by Jordan Whittington. That's all he needed, right? Just bring that up, then he's 0 for 3 downfield, and then he gets a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Nice job of using that motion. He ends up getting the ball thrown to Whittington. And now a first down throw across the middle, and the catch is made by Adonai Mitchell. Finally, a little rhythm for you, whereas a flag comes in after the play, and it may be an ineligible man downfield yeah. for the Longhorns to wipe away that pass. Yeah, they're going to get him. They're going to bring this back. You can see how he's using that pre-snap movement to affect this defense and their communication. It's worked back-to-back. -back. Back. This time, it'll offense. have to come back. Number 62. Got Kirk Buehler, 21 yeah. plays for the Texas Two offense. The two longest plays, Whittington's 20 yard run and a fake punt and then the fourth and one pass from red to hell right. which resulted in a fumble that they over those are the two best plays they've had in offense well, very much it, off the script very much so majors out robertson in run pass option meaning you can either hand it off or throw it he decided the pull was the right read but robertson downfield to bring it back and first and 15 they hand it off and Breaking tackles is Baxter. Just does not look physically at all like a true freshman. Very impressive lower body power. No doubt about it. A limp off. Jeez. We've seen a lot of injuries. We've seen a lot of unusual plays. Hopefully he'll be okay. As you said, he's had to fight through some injuries early. By him going down with that injury earlier this year, Brooks has really emerged as their go-to back. Over 200 last week against Kansas. It's an important game because it sets up a second and six, and now they give it to Brooks. It'll be third and short. I love Brooks. I love what he can do. He plays with a purpose. Has a tattoo on his right forearm about his father who passed away in March of 22. Uses that as a motivation. That's his higher purpose that he thinks about. Plays with a great deal of passion. A lot of maturity, too, to be sat down as a starter opening game to get the job back when Baxter was injured. Averages 119 a game. Lewis checks the sidelines on this third and three. Play clock at five. And they hand it off to Brooks, who makes a big burst, breaks a tackle. They try to punch it free. He won't let him, and he's tackled at the Oklahoma 30 by Gentry Williams. Well, I think this defense is expecting a throw, but watch the combination block up front. How about Robertson doing a good job of getting up to the linebacker, Connect Off guard, expecting the pass, and they crease him in the middle. 31-yard gain, and they run down and try to play real fast, and it's a another false start. This offensive line didn't have a single one of these in Tuscaloosa. Incredible poise. Number 52, five-yard penalty. Well, this tempo is different today. It really is, and I, and I think the reason you're seeing that, to be candid, if you go back to when Ryan Day at Ohio State played Clemson and Brent Venables was his defensive coordinator, and they won convincingly that year, there's a, bit, a lot of talk about, well, Brent Venables gets the last look, and some people accuse him of stealing signs. He just tries to get a last look. Well, the answer to that by a lot of offensive play callers is to change the tempo up, not to let him get that look. And now, we have to spend a time out. The clock was ticking down as Texas tries to keep this drive going. Ewers has finally found some rhythm. The All-State Red River Rivalry on ABC, presented by Head & Shoulders, is brought to you by All-State. You're in good hands. And Belfort Property Restoration, restoring more than property. Athletic trivia question. We were thinking about all the great running backs on both sides, Kirk. Kind of a trick question. Texas fans yelling at us. It's Sam Ellinger. Oh, Sam Ellinger. He had 12 oh, my touchdowns in games between OU and Texas. Cut the big eight. Yeah. Big 12 championship game in yes. C team. One of those games here, he was almost like a, just a bruiser, just scoring touchdown after touchdown in the red zone area. So Texas had the fall start, then they spend a timeout, so still first and 15. Yours changes direction, trying to escape for his life, and he's brought down. 
Ethan Downs got their first. It's a play they love to use, but it takes a long time to develop. Watch La Laulu take this away. Eight does a good job of anticipating. They ran this exact same play a week ago against Kansas, but this time it's taken away. Lost 10 yards. And here's a long throw. Catch made. Worthy. Gets back a big chunk of the yardage from second and 25. It'll be third and manageable now inside the 30. Max protects. Tight end in the back in there to help him out. And that's just a one-on-one -on -one matchup against a soft corner. Easy read. Throws on rhythm and time there. That time by yours. Gives him a shot here. Yeah, Texas subs. Oklahoma had a chance to do the same and catch their breath before this third and seven. Ball out quickly. One-handed grab made by Brooks, who fights near the first down. Stutzman forced him out. And it's going to be... Yeah. There, I mean, the marker. Watch this. The one hand, like you said, and then to dive to try to pick up that first down. He's short. Fourth down. Yeah, but not by much. What a great effort there by Brooks. Bert Auburn, the Texas kicker, has been struggling a bit by his high standards. And Sarkeesian not going with the field goal here. It's about a yard and a half that they need. Yours on the move. Flips it. short yardage play fourth and two completely expecting that they're going to try to run this football and once Ewers rolled out to the right nobody picks up the tight end and of all the tight ends in this game you're taking the Sanders you're not worried about Gunner Helm <laughs> Gunner Helm's out there to block and set the edge first touchdown of the season just his fourth and fifth catches today he's figured in prominently he's the guy that when we caught the fourth down pass and then fumbled, but it was taken away by replay. And Texas, 85-yard drive in nine plays to jump on top. They got her help right here, and watch how he ends up just almost, hey, guys, I'm just here to block. Don't mind me. Once the quarterback rolls, look at the defense. All eyes are on the quarterback. Nobody thinks about the threat of Gunner Helm. So Sark goes against the grain here, gets it to the 6'5", 250-pound tight end, who usually is out there to block. Comes out of Cherry Creek High School. That's a powerhouse in the Denver area, and he's now got his first touchdown as a Texas Longhorn, and it's a, it's a memory for life, and it's a big moment in this game as Texas marks right down the field, and the best news for them, they get their quarterback going. Exactly. They got their quarterback going and they got their rhythm going. I think a game within a game is Sark's play calling against Brent Venables, the adjustments, the cat and mouse game, mixing up tempo, trying not to allow Venables a chance to make those adjustments late. That'll continue throughout the game. Stone to boot it away. And this is for the way for a fair catch. Well, Sooners will take over at the 25. Holly? Well, guys, Quinn Ewers redeeming himself on that last drive. He got off to a tough start with the interception, losing his center, a lot of chaos. But he's been working all season on his mental conditioning. He had a meeting on Thursday with Dr. Coffin of Texas to make sure that his fear of failure does not rise up in this game. And he did face some failure early in this game. But on that drive, he comes to the sideline after the big touchdown, calm, composed. You wouldn't know anything's going on by the look on his face. This is something he's been working on to rebound. That's a great point, Holly. Breathing exercises, sports psychology, those are the tools at his disposal. That was a lot to bounce back from early. This is Marcus Major, and works the right side. That's a pretty solid first down game. They haven't had many on the ground. Well, you can see what Jeff Levy did. He started with four receivers to the right, and brought him all the way back to the left, and the adjustment from Texas gave him numbers back to the right to run. Long runs really weren't lined up to defend the pass on the far side, but they hand it off to Major, runs to this side, and it's Barron getting him down, but it's a first down. Yeah, the whole goal of Oklahoma's offense is to get the defense to look over to the sideline as the ball is being snapped. They're trying to get the call. Texas trying to avoid that against this tempo. Off the play for Gabriel, flips it short. Major makes one-man misses. 
knocked down at the 45 by Anthony Hill, but this is what they say is on schedule for this offense. And he also, I love how the term, he says, we want him to create completions. Just operating within this offense. If it's a quick throw like that, stay on schedule, let us play fast. This is the slowest you'll ever see Oklahoma's offense here. How fast they're playing. 75% completion rate coming in. That would shatter the school record by Baker Mayfield as Gabriel this time plows the middle and gets nothing, so it sets up a third and long three. It was the right read. He had a chance to read that. Kind of a power play quarterback power coming back the other way off of that play fake, but a big defensive line not letting anything get started there in the trenches. Zerner's two for six on third so far. Walker is the back. Gabriel has time and delivers a pass caught far side. It's a first down to Farouk. I don't know if it's because he's lefty and he's not the tallest. I mean, I know people compare to his kind of his, his system and the way he his mechanics. That ball gets out so quick. Give credit to that offensive line giving him time. 14-yard gain in the third down. Gabriel has a lot of time here. And now we will take off, makes a cut, weaves his way down, starts to slide, takes a hit. Oklahoma fans want a flag, and they get one. Jaron Thompson arrived, but the quarterback is beginning to give himself up. That's part of his game that's very underrated, the way he can escape and create much better this year. One of the worst in the country a year ago, was pressured a lot, didn't have a chance to make plays like this. Now one of the top 10 quarterbacks in the country at doing this. After the play, personal foul, late hit, just letting quarterback. Defense, half the distance to the goal. And you know, it really wasn't after the play, Bill. He was sliding, but he was had begun that motion to give himself up when Thompson arrived. How do you see it? Well, technically, when he starts to slide, the play's dead. Okay. So, technically, it is a late hit. good for fans to know when you start to slide, not, not the actual slide itself. Once you start to go down, you're giving yourself up. No, and that's the exact spot the ball will be placed. Right, right. Oklahoma trying to reclaim the lead, set up inside the Texas 15. On the end around, it's Gavin Freeman. And he's the punt returner. He's got good quickness in tight spaces and worms his way down to the two. Great job again of getting away from the, the big, strong defensive lineman. Get him out on the edge where he's got some room to work with that quickness. Texas defense barely set up as they snap it and hand it to Major. It runs into a burn orange wall for one. It's a little different in there. <laughs> you, know, you, get the, you get the linebackers and safeties trying to get down. No place you want to be. No. Time looked like Barron, the, the safety got in there, the nickel. Oklahoma did sub. Texas brings on a few fresh defenders. First and goal. Walker, uh, short yards, power back. But Gabriel keeps it, takes a hit, and he'll be stopped short of the goal line. Derek Williams, true freshman, pressed into duty with Catalan out of the game. Pretty good job. He's known as a, as a physical freshman. You can see Barron gets in there, too. A lot of Longhorns, but boy, it's fun to watch Derek Williams, a five-star with a lot of promise, being forced into duty and showing he's not just a guy that has skill. He's not afraid to get in there and thump. They were all over the quarterback that time. Gabriel already won rushing touchdown. But to the end of the walker this time. And he just waltzes in, standing up. Oklahoma answers the answer by Texas and reclaims the lead. Caden Green is being in this game right now. He's on the, the left side there. Watch the job that he does. 70. He's a true freshman. Nice job. The double team there in the middle. The center rain. Right guard. The Toyer. They open that hole up nicely. The AT&T 5G clicker. Walker's third touchdown run of the season. 10-play, 
75-yard drive for the Sooners took just about four minutes. So it took a while with this frantic beginning, but both offenses really finding their rhythm right now. 17-14 Sooners. Beautiful day in Dallas. Goodyear providing the aerial coverage. Road tested and game ready. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear, more driven. Prime time on ABC. Notre Dame back at it. Battle Duke. And now they take on Louisville on the road. Undefeated. Think of, think of the last two games Notre Dame's had. A game that they played well enough to beat Ohio State. Pulled away from them late. Had to respond last week. Another emotional game. Found a way to beat Duke. Now against undefeated Louisville tonight on ABC. That's three straight weeks. They're going to have to rally and see what they can do tonight. It'll be a good game. Well, Ewers back to work here for the last drive. He was four for four, 59 in the touchdown. Yeah, finally got the ball thrown downfield up to that point. They've not had a completion. This is a third down and short, recognizing it. Good job of Brooks being able to get through there. He's always going to make those safeties miss. This is at fourth and one. The motion affects the eyes. They sneak Gunner Helm back there. And Texas offense looking like Texas offense for the first time today. Doing without Jatavian Sanders, who had the ankle problem coming in. He was targeted once. Remember, he got rocked by Billy Bowman. Play that resulted in an interception. He's not out there. Adonai Mitchell hasn't been a factor either for this passing game. No catches, one target. Down the middle. It's worthy. He's been a factor. Pass with plenty of air. They found open space and beat Key Lawrence. The jet motion affects the coverage in the back end. Watch how the safeties have to respect that. Nobody left in the middle. Ewers sees that, delivers the ball in a hurry. 39 yards, two back look here. It's Brooks behind the block of Robinson running to the left. You can see the beautiful play design of Steve Sarkisian, all the brain power on the other side. You've talked about defensively for Venables. What a great chess match. Uh, again, I think that's the, the, the aspect of this game that's so much fun. Brent Venables, one of the best defensive minds in college football, the head coach, still heavily involved. You can watch him. Sark wants to make sure he's giving his offense and his quarterback an advantage. Doesn't want to just line up. He's always going to have movement, making OU have to adjust. That's worthy in motion. Two back look, and they hand it off inside there to C.J. Baxter, who's near the marker. And with those two backs, Brooks leads the way. Like I said, you're going to see Sark's response to not letting Brent Venables have a chance to make late adjustments. Either go very fast or move around with pre-snap movement. Sanders comes back into the game, which is a good sign. Oh, you got Ewers now off to the left. Yes, Sabian Red back at Wildcat quarterback on third and one. Flanked by Baxter. And it's a keeper. Makes a cut. Boom! Lowers the shoulder. Makes a first down at the 20. Red, of course, who came in and tossed a pass on foot yeah. before. And, and he's a, yeah, he's a running back. He's their fifth running back behind Robinson and Blue. So he knows what to do when he has his hands on the football, but... You'll see him as their short yardage wildcat. We already saw the throw, just as a different wrinkle. And obviously when he keeps the ball, he knows how to pick up those yards. Two tight ends set up to the right. Baxter in the backfield. And a whistle. And a timeout spent by Venables on defense. He senses that Texas is operating rhythm, wants to get his guys organized on the same page. 3-13 before halftime, Horns try to reclaim the lead. State Farm halftime report just minutes away. We got Boyd, we got Dan, we got Kevin here. And right now, Ohio State tied at home. And uh, LSU's defense needs Boyd to suit up in Columbia. <laughs> uh, right wow. now, in the Cotton Bowl, different Quinn Ewers in the second quarter, much more settled down Quinn Ewers in the second quarter. And I think the OU defense has done a really good job of keeping the ball in front of him. Mitchell doesn't have a catch. Worthy's only got three. Good job by that defense so far. Really good first half so far. Back to Chris and Herbie. Big moment here. It's a red zone possession. This is where Oklahoma's defense is at its best. And Texas Kirk, hasn't been that efficient in the red zone this season coming in through an interception of their only red zone trip before this. Yeah, it's, it's not Sark's offense being 109th in a nation of touchdown percentage in the red zone. It's an area they've really emphasized. Rules on the move. Flag is down. Catch is made at the nine-yard line by Adonai Mitchell. It would be his first if it stands, but we'll check the marker. I think that's it could be defensive holding. It 
to me like Winnington was trying to go out to the flat. Defender grabbed onto his jersey. Mitchell's a guy, Kirk, 10 catches, 141 yards, and touchdown against Kansas. He's been a great big game player in his career. Mitchell has a catch in each of the four Defense. CFP games he's played. Number 80, that penalty is declined, and his local play was a first down. Montfort guilty, but they'll, they'll let the catch stand to Mitchell, and he, he's just a guy who's been too quiet so far. He, he has, but, it, you know, he, he the difference he has made, you could make an argument, there are a lot of great transfers. The impact he's had on this offense has been as big as anything of any of these top contenders in the country. And off inside, Boone knocked down his back. So I'm not saying he's doing anything wrong. They're doing a good job on him. They, they are. Once they get hit involved, it becomes and, a different And deal. you know that's coming. And with, we'll see if Sanders is able to hold up. But when you throw Mitchell in there, it takes a lot of pres pressure off of Worthy. I think with Worthy and now Mitchell and Winnington and Sanders. And that is a great group for Ewers to work with. And he has spread the football around with those talented playmakers. Second and goal. Empty backfield. And swarming into the backfield to make the play for Oklahoma is Bothroyd. He lose four. He's the guy who was flagged a second ago. Yeah, but I think he saw that coming. It's a good job by Brent Venables schooling him up and getting him ready to, to anticipate anytime he sees motion coming to him. Be ready for that threat just in case they hand him that football on that fly sweep. It happens so quickly that if you don't anticipate it, that ball's around the corner. Heck of a job there by 80, the transfer from Wake Forest. Interesting here. You don't, you don't see this too often in college football in the first half, but a clock management timeout by Venables here. Minute 58 to go in the half. It's a third and goal, so he wants to get the defense set, but he also, whatever happens here, wants to give Gabriel some time before halftime. Yeah, I, I think with, with your offense and how fast they can execute, how quickly they can attack it's a smart move this is a big sequence right now with two minutes to go this third and goal you're down by three the way the game is gone the way the game it feels like it's heading this is a points matter on every possession right and going back to your point about their struggles in the red zone Sark saying we have emphasized it more this week than ever before because we want to go back to what Ewers is most comfortable with down in this area. Yeah, it's really a premium on Ewers' execution down here. Hasn't been a strong point so far this season. Brooks motions out five receivers. Ewers has some space, pump fakes, and he's not going to fool anybody. He's dragged down to the six by Kanek, and it's fourth down. Well, they spread it out, went empty. Creates some one-on-one -on -one chances, but instead, Oklahoma, they're going to sit back in more of a zone. And doing a good job of keeping their eyes on you just in case and final he takes off. And Kanek is in there doing a good job almost as a spy there because of the way Ewers has taken off this year on these third downs. Good job being aware of that. They expected to see more zone from Oklahoma this year. That was a well-spent timeout by Venables. They not only preserved time for their offense, they got the defense set up well. It kind of looked like I saw Sark frustrated. I don't know if he thought that was a face mask by Kanek. What, what he, he I know, he's, yeah, I know he's upset with the officials. Looks like it. No, he came down. His forearm grazed it, but the contact was on the chest. Bert Auburn is reliable. Seven of eight from short distance. He's had a couple of misses in recent weeks from beyond 40. Normally pretty solid down here. He'll go to try to tie things up. He's going to deal with an angle. My, my spotter, Mike Black, says, Kirk, got to keep the head down. That's the that's the technical thing here. Keep the head down if you're a kicker when you deal with an angle like this from the hash mark. So we'll see if he does it. He can't help himself. <laughs> no, he, he loves it. He's got to stop, watch out. He's ready. <laughs> it's a 25-yarder to tie this up at 17. Keeps the head down and knocks it right through. So that's a 68-yard field goal drive in 10 plays, three and a half minutes, and now Gabriel's got 153 to work with. We're back in eight seconds, but now a look from Ram Trucks. Ram Trucks, built to serve. Gabriel, so experienced. 
Well traveled three years at UCF. This is year two. Again, reminder, couldn't play in this game a year ago. Got a targeting hit from a TCU player the week before. He was over there in a jersey, and he said it was a really helpless feeling. Watching this offense shut out, they had five different dudes, including the punter, attempt to pass. They had 39 yards passing in, in last year's loss. It's unreal. What a difference yeah. a year makes. But how about the scene here? For people that have never been to this setting, it is unbelievable. It's one of a kind, state fair. A lot of people going around this stadium have no idea there's a game going on. <laughs> well, there's 100,000 people or so inside here enjoying it. Split right from the 50-yard line. Crimson and cream one side, burnt orange on the other. Very unique. And this game's living up to what you expect to see from it with some unanticipated excitement. And for it, will let it bounce. When you talk about the importance of this game, both these teams at 5-0 and certainly have hopes and dreams of a national championship. This is the chance to reach the playoff, to get in the four-team bracket. You can see that no matter which team wins, 72% for Oklahoma, 73% for Texas. They'll both be very likely favored in the remainder of their games. Could be the first of two meetings. 20 miles to the west is the conference championship game. Not to say, yeah, that they're, they're going to get tested, may meet again in the conference championship, but I just, the, the springboard that this can give you, mm -hmm. the confidence that this can give you, whereas if you lose this one, even though you're 5-1, and one, you're regrouping a bit. No timeouts, a minute 53. They pitch it to Andrew Anthony, who ducks under a tackler, falls down short of the marker. Clock still moving. Yeah, Anthony, the transfer from Michigan. I thought it was a little surprised when he came over, but it's worked out well for him. 6'1, 190. And they're going to run the ball. And Major will move the six. The clock will continue to move as soon as they get those ready. Yeah, Michigan, they're in such disarray. you got to get out of Ann Arbor. It's just not working out there. He said he didn't... He got a lot of puzzled questions when he decided to transfer. It has worked out really well for him, Anthony. Gabriel, an inaccurate throw. Tried to lead major, but it was off target. Clock stopped with 120 to play. Texas just sitting back in a zone. A couple robbers being safeties, sitting down. Right around that 15-yard mark, just kind of reading the eyes, trying to bait him into any kind of throw, but just nobody open downfield. Gabriel patient, checks the sideline. Here comes the pressure. They pick it up. Long throw, caught, and spinning free is Farouk. They chase him down. sideline you'd love to see the defender this time Holmes use that sideline to help him with leverage to the inside but instead he gives that away and then gives up yards after the catch at 34 yards after the catch Oklahoma thinking end zone now not just a field goal try Gabriel took a look left now dumps it down over the middle and this is Walker with the catch breaks free again you can't get this dude down he is so powerful. Another first down at the 16. Gavin Holmes having a tough go out there. Just, just take completions. That's what you do in this offense. You're right. He is a handful to bring down. Lower body strength. You never can assume you got him. Texas trying to rotate bodies. Go back to Brent Venables using those timeouts. This is why he did. He has a lot of confidence in how quickly they execute. And the fact that Dylan Gabriel has such a great handle. Look at this. Still a minute to go. They're inside the 20. Only taking 52 seconds to get this close, and they'll run the ball again with Major. Murphy wraps him up. If you're going to run it, you do have to have a little urgency between. Yeah, teams. yeah, and, and again, I think it, it's, it speaks volumes about how fast they go, that they're not panicking. They're not going recklessly fast. Anthony off to the left. And there is a whistle on a flag. And right guard, oh, actually right tackle moved. Guyton. It's been a really clean first half for the Longhorns, or for uh, the Sooners. The Longhorns have had six penalties. That's just the third for Oklahoma. This uh, false start's going to be a potential 10-second runoff because the clock was running. False start, offense, number 60, five-yard penalty. 
still second down. This foul also includes a 10 second runoff. Please set the game clock to 30 seconds. And we're going to start with and my we're signal. Going. So that, that uh, suddenly changes the complexion a little bit without that timeout. They're down to 30 seconds suddenly. out. Gabriel takes off, has a little crease, makes a man miss, still fights down inside the 10, he's short of the mark, but the clock continues to run, can't stop it with a timeout. What a great decision, and he has such acceleration. Now on third and two from the pocket, backpedaling, serving, time running out, the ball is incomplete at the one yard line with two seconds to go, very nearly curved time back there and the ball's dropped he walks into the end zone he's had such a great half here walker shown what he can do running the football catching the ball i just think he started to think about where to go the fact that he's going to go score a touchdown here in the red river rivalry he just didn't look that in that's the goal line he walks in jalen ford had lost him so oklahoma will settle for a 26 yard attempt from schmidt and a timeout is taken. Yeah, there were a couple things in play. Yeah, if he catches it, he walks in. But also, Gabriel, if he has stayed a little bit longer, you could come up empty. A 10-second runoff for the five-yard penalty proved to be yep. crucial. He yeah. changed things on this last drive. He looks out to the right. Not there. Look at the blocks downfield. It's almost like he either had the option to throw it quickly or a quarterback draw. He ends up running the football the very next play. You got the matchup. You got what you want. Creating once again off schedule by Gabriel once again. You don't think these points are important. And this Red River rivalry, the team leading at half has won 10 of the last 12 games in this series. So pretty big deal. And OU does get the ball to start the second half. Last year's 49 zip law was an aberration. Before that, the last eight had been one score football games. Feels like we're definitely head there today. This time Schmidt will deal with an angle from just inside the left hash. Right through. So, in that frantic first quarter, neither offense really had much rhythm. That changed in the second quarter. 23 combined points, and Oklahoma trots up the tunnel with a 20 to 17 lead at the break of the 119th Red River rivalry. Everything you hope for and what you expect when these two teams get together. And here's Holly with Brett Venables. Well, Coach, the start of this game was so chaotic. How do you feel like your team finally was able to settle into some kind of rhythm? Yeah, I say embrace the chaos. You know, that's we talked about that a lot. And, uh, you know, pressure's a privilege. Chaos is what this game's all about, always has been. But you want to have boys under pressure. And I thought for the most part we did. We gave up a couple of drives there in the, in, uh, in the second quarter. I thought they got some momentum back. Uh, but a really great job there. You'd love to... Uh, converted there and made that a touchdown, but a great job by uh, Zach, the middle eight, uh, sitting in a solid position there, and again, getting the ball back Thank into you. the third Thank quarter. Thank you so much, right, you Coach. Appreciate you. Yeah, you bet. Thoughtful, analytical, and thorough at the end of the first half is Red Venables. Embrace the chaos. Pressure is a privilege. All the catchphrases coming out here. The State Farm Halftime Report is coming up after these messages, 20 to 17 at the break. College football playoff semifinals and the college football playoff national championship on ESPN. Hope you're ready for more in the second half. The All-State Red River Rivalry on ABC. Presented by Head and Shoulders. This presentation of the Big 12 on ESPN. Final chapter of this great rivalry in this conference. Wow, what an eventful first half. Back and forth. Oklahoma's going to get the ball to start the second half, and 
maybe we'll get a chance to see these two quarterbacks and offenses build and what they did in the second quarter because Gabriel's going to get the ball and the guy who has a deep connection and trust with Jeff Levy, his play caller. We've seen that kind of on display as this game has kind of gotten going. Yeah, it, it took a little bit for the kind of the flow of the game to settle in just because there were so many different things with the special teams. But now we're starting to get there. And I'll tell you, Dylan Gabriel's legs are a major factor for Texas. You know, something that they've got to come up with some answers. And I think he was able to maneuver around and, and keep a lot of plays alive think about him you think of a quick delivery getting the ball out great understanding of Levy's scheme but he has shown this year and really a lot of his career that you better account for him when he takes off and creates and the guy is starting his 43rd game in a row by the way unable to play a year ago and making the most of this chance so his kickoff is deep Holly, what do you have? Well, just caught up with Steve Sarkeesian. Two of his most important offensive players are very limited for this second half. Center Jake Majors is emergency only usage with a left ankle injury. Jatavion Sanders, their do everything tight end, is very limited and we will not see much of him. So, how they respond from that is a huge factor right now. He did feel like they gained some rhythm offensively. He said, I wish we would have executed better. And when I asked him if we'd see more trickeration in the second half, he gave me a big smile. Oh, Holly, you know me. I like to have fun. <laughs> Gabriel, little option look. Major on the edge is dragged down after a short game by Sorrell. Not to mention, he mentioned injuries on the offensive sides, but with Catalan still out, Derek Williams, too, is, is in this game as a true freshman and very capable of making plays. Farouk's in the backfield. He's got it. Speedy around the edge, and it's a first down. Oklahoma starting fast. Get that direct snap to him. We saw it in the first half, and because he gets around the edge so much faster with the direct snap, they're able to seal the edge, and Nice to see Drake Stoops, who's such a physical slot receiver out front there, leading the way. Play fake. Gabriel makes a long throw to the near sideline and a hands catch across the 40-yard line. Looks like it's uh, Andrew Anthony. What a strong arm. You know, he, he can deliver the ball. Doesn't his mechanics, I know he's from Hawaii, he's left-handed, not the tallest. He does, it, his mannerisms, the way he moves around, does remind you of Tua. Absolutely. Marcus Mariota is the guy that really inspired Gabriel the most as a young guy in Hawaii. Heard that Heisman Trophy speech when he reached out to all the Polynesian kids, telling him to dream big. And he did. Flips short of the middle. Stogner reaches out a big hand, makes the catch, and he's wrestled down by a bunch of Longhorns, including Jalen Ford, but a first down near midfield. Close to a hold there, but they did not call it in the right guard. There was some penetration off on the right side. Good job by Byron Murphy getting in there, but Tollier ended up, I thought they were going to call it. They let it go, and nice throw there by Gabe. Gabriel on the slant. This gets made by Stoops and serenaded, as he always is when he touches the ball by the crowd here, the son of the legend. Absolutely. And he's out there because he's a great football player, not because of his dad. That hit caused the ball to come loose, and then he landed on top of it. It's an incomplete pass. Well, he got hit hard. Yeah, Thompson, yeah. Yeah. I thought he maybe completed the process. The umpire was right there to call it a catch. Right into traffic. Mm. Has it initially, but what a hit there to jar that loose by... You said Chris Jaron Thompson, kind of the quarterback of that secondary. He's trying to sell it like he caught it. <laughs> darn well, the ball hit the ground right. and it came up. I'll tell you, Kirk, we've seen it from the very first snaps of this game, and it's not a surprise, but it just reinforces what this rivalry is all about. Guys are hitting harder, arriving faster. The whole, it's no wonder some, some guys have gone down with injuries in this game with the tempo. Yeah, it's the hardest hitting game we, we've had a chance to be. I, we did a Texas Bama game, but it, this has a different feel to it with how hard these safeties and, and, and linebackers are hitting people. We assume that replay is going to clean that up. Richard Brown is in the booth. It'll be second and ten back at the OU 49 after they do fix it. They got the stop near the end of the half. The Sooners defense forcing the field goal. 
They preserved time, Gabriel right down the field. Now a chance to build in the three-point lead before Ewers gets the ball back. It was an incomplete back. pass. It will be second down at the previous spot. You know, the middle eight is something that Dabo Sweeney popularized at Clemson when Venables was there, and now he's preaching it. The last four minutes of the first half, first four of the second half, if you own those eight minutes, the chances are very good you win the game. He's trying to make that a reality here this afternoon again by building on this lead. Walker is the back. It is second and ten after the review. Walker makes his way. Again, hard to bring him down. And Anthony Hill just said, uh-uh, I'm not going to do anything but wrap you up and body slam you. That is some strength by the freshman. It, it is some strength, but it's a good push by OU's offensive line. The key to this game for Texas was their defensive line being difference makers. On third and two, they flip it to Stoops, who reaches back, makes the catch, and they move to six to the 37. This slid him right out of the backfield. Set up a nice pick or kind of a, a rub there by Farouk off the right. Stoops getting up talking. Gabriel, long throw near side. Anthony spins free of one tackle. Wrestled down at the 25. Another first down. What those great, those wide throws like that in this offense, not only is it a great completion in a first down, but it really stretches the Texas defense horizontally eventually gives you a chance to take some shots to Farouk downfield and other receivers downfield. Off the fake, Gabriel across the middle, and then Stogner, the tight end, knocked down at the 14. I like how Jeff Levy says it. It goes back to the days of our files and Baylor. Make them defend every blade of grass on the field. And, and, and that's the theory, because you look at the formations, you look at how they attack out on the perimeter, makes you have to respect things out wide, and then they gut you in, into the middle. Keeper, Gabriel follows a block and now skips out of bounds at the eight-yard line. And as a defender, you don't know if it's coming or going. When the ball's getting thrown quickly outside, and you're going tempo, and they take vertical shots, and the quarterback's running off of a, off of a fake, it's a lot to deal with. Two backs in the backfield. Hand it off to Walker, who plows ahead. It's first and goal, OU. I think the secret sauce to this offense, there, there, there's offenses around the country. There's about five or six of them that run this style. When the quarterback's involved in the run game, it's it makes it almost impossible to throw, to, to deal with a quarterback that can run and throw. Two back look again. Soup's just a decoy, and they run Walker down to the one. Yeah, that was the same look where they threw him the ball out in the flat. He has the option to pull that and flip it out to Stoops or give it a time he decides to give it. It came very close to punching that in. They'll huddle up here, but no substitutions. So Texas unable to get fresh bodies on for this second and goal play. Walker. Touchdown, Oklahoma. They stretch the lead with their first possession of the second half. Take it 75 yards in 13 plays. Walter Rouse on the left side of this offensive line. They're just looking to push and create this hole. Good job here. Throw Stogner in there as well. Offensive line doing their job. And again, the tough running by Walker who dropped that that potential touchdown reception this time is able to cross the goal line for the touchdown. So Sooners offense has scored in four straight possessions. Two touchdowns, two field goals. And Texas with their largest deficit of the season, down 10 in Dallas. What a difference last year, of course. Gabriel unable to play. Davis Babel, the pit transfer, was thrown in there. They just couldn't get anything going on offense. And different story today with a healthy quarterback and a lot of balance. Yeah, what, what an incredible difference. Second year, Brent Venable's system and recruiting and culture and just making this team more representative of what he envisioned when he took over. Outrushing Texas today, which is a Surprise given what they've done coming in. Robinson. 
slips away from a few tacklers, and Keelan Robinson will be wrestled down at the 26. Zach Schmidt, the kicker, got down there and got involved. Ready, Kirk, Tuesday, dropping a puck in a new NHL season, a triple header on ESPN, Preds in the Lightning, Blackhawks against Crosby and the Penguins, and Vegas Golden Knights, defending champions, host the Kraken on ESPN+. Plus. How the Avs looking this year? Bounce back here, I would think. Yeah. So plenty of talent. The Jackets are major bounce back. <laughs> Hopefully they stay healthy. They're perennial bounce back. <laughs> Come on, man. Viewers trying to get things going here. And they're down by 10 for the first time this season. He tests the middle, and that's Danny Stutzman who just swarmed in there. You know, Stutzman, not 100% today, Kirk, but fighting through it. I love to watch this guy play football. I mean, he is a throwback. And in, in a weekend where Dick Butkus has passed away and we're all thinking about him and his family, Stutzman is a linebacker that would make Dick very proud with how physical he is. Indeed, viewers, a second down throw. It's complete across the middle. And Gunnar Helm has been a key figure today. He talked about him having to pick up with Detavian Sanders, not able to offer much, makes another catch. It's third and short now. That ball was very fortunate not to be touched by Stutzman and potentially intercepted. A lot of movement in the pocket by Ewers, and he throws from his left all the way back to the right. And I think, I don't know if he didn't see Stutzman, but if he did, I mean, you're talking about an inch or two that he's able to avoid it. This is important. Texas got to get something going on offense or defense needs a rest on third and two. The catch is made by Sanders, who's back out there toughing it out. And big number zero moves the sticks out across the 40. Why Watch Helm, who scored the touchdown. And to the right, look how open he is. He's got this. That shows you how much he loves Sanders. He's going to Sanders no matter what. Sanders throws a block there, but not enough to protect the quarterback for long. Ethan Downs has been big off the edge. We wondered, is there an elite pass rusher in this game? There really wasn't coming in, but Downs has made a big impact today. He sure did. And that's a, a tough block there for Sanders, who's coming over from the right over to the left. And I'll tell you what's impressive there is Downs worked through first, the tight end, Gunner Helm, and then eventually Sanders coming over there. Fourth sack allowed by this Longhorn offensive line. Suddenly it's second and 16. Screen. And they get a few yards, about five of it back. It's Whittington. Sark trying to find a way to slow down this front. They are they are really aggressive, doing a really good job of disrupting things, playing with a lot of confidence with this 10-point lead. See if they come after Ewers here. Third down and 12. Bring the pressure. Ewers steps up, thinks about running. He'll take off. No way he's going to get there. Lost the ball. It comes loose, still rolling around. And Oklahoma has it. Gentry Williams had an early pick. Now he's got a fumble recovery right at midfield. Peyton Bowen, the true freshman, causes that with a major hit. This guy's a true freshman. It's what you fear when a quarterback takes off. Keeping the ball in tight, he did. But the freshman, who they say is a superstar in the making, comes up, unloads into Ewers, and knocks that ball loose. He made an impact first as a special teamer. Bowen has blocked two punts this season. Now he forces the third turnover by Ewers today. The two early picks. And then when he had gotten the rhythm, gotten going, the fumble. And now this is a big moment for the Texas defense. Sudden change, plus territory. We're actually right at the 50. Does Levy roll the dice here, try to create one-on-one, -on -one and maybe take a shot downfield? They've got a fleet of speedsters on the field to work with. Make it to Walker. Gabriel rolls, gets around the quarter. Ooh, he's dragged down. Nice tackle by Jade Barrett in the open field to prevent a bigger gain. Yeah, I think one of the more underrated players on the Texas defense. Good effort. He chased that all the way from the backside, showed his speed. One of the leaders when you get really close to this team. I like how he plays, plays with a bit of a chip on his shoulder. Second a lot of pressure on his Texas defense to step up after that turnover. 
Gabriel has a lot of time, checks it down, and the catch is made in traffic by Walker, so it's going to be third down and long. Jalen Ford right there to make the stop. Let's see if they slow the tempo a bit here. Yeah. Texas sitting back here on these first couple plays, more zone, trying to keep things in front, trying to make Gabriel have to hold on to the football. Let's see if they elect to dial it up here. They're going to bring in Anthony Hill. You see him as a pass rusher. Got him up the top. Gabriel gets the ball out in a hurry. It's incomplete. Tried to find Andrew Anthony on the slant. Terrence Brooks broke it up, and that is an enormous stop for a defense down 10 off the turnover. It didn't impact the play, but just to give you an idea, Kwiatkowski, the defensive coordinator, I just said they sat back, a little more conservative first two plays. That time, they sensed this point in the game down 10. They wanted to try to apply pressure, even though Gabriel got the ball out quickly. Heck of a job by the Horns D. Get that three and out after the turnover by Ewers. They bring in their specialist in these situations, Luke Elzinga, the Central Michigan transferred punter, and he's the best at knocking the ball deep. And Texas, a fair catch there. Worthy chose to take the ball at the five yard line. So Horns defense gets a stop, but the Sooners is still up by 10 here at the Texas State Fair. Where there is no shortage of food options. Get you a corny to help. The All-State Red River Rivalry on ABC, presented by Head & Shoulders, is brought to you by Ram Trucks, America's best light-duty pickup for new vehicle quality. Golden hat awaits the winners. I love that piece of tradition here. <laughs> Some guys wear it better than others. Taco Bell, Live My Student Section of the Year contest. You can download the Taco Bell app to learn more. Well, Texas offense operating from their end of the field should have cooperation from the home crowd. But this Oklahoma defense, Kirk, as you said, they are operating with a lot of confidence and bringing serious pressure on the quarterback. They try to mitigate that with the running game, but off the edge. So, Nice play there, made. Doing a good job, Jordan Kelly. A lot of movement, a lot of rotating of bodies, staying fresh up front. Yours right now, you know, that, when you're backed up at your own five yard line, you're just trying to get a first down and get out of there. But they're going to at some point have to stretch this defense. They're just attacking too much downfield or downhill. Causing a lot of problems against the run game in the short pass game. Viewers from the end zone does try to stretch the field and wide open is Xavier Worthy on the edge. He got away from Woody Washington. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Sark sensing and feeling what we're talking about is they're 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 taking away everything underneath and they're collapsing down. At some point, you got to make a pay for that by getting the ball thrown downfield and stretching things downfield. Fourth catch. For Worthy worth 81 yards. Yours pressured, harassed, and flushed immediately and delivers the outlet throw to Gunnar Helm has become a big part of things this afternoon. Well, heck of a job here just somehow getting away from this pressure right here in the middle. I mean, you, maybe without your leader, Lee Majors inside there, Kelly able to get in there in a hurry. And off, running right. Brooks makes a cut. Bangs in Oklahoma territory. Crucial possession for the Longhorns to try to get momentum turned back their way. It's nice to see 24 if you're a Texas fan just have a little bit of space to work with. He if he gets one on one with a defensive back, he's going to make you miss. That time he made a couple defensive backs move, miss. Gentry Williams along with Reggie Pearson both with him trying to tackle number 24. 19-yard game. Yours has a lot of time, which hasn't happened very often today. Delivers a long throw on the far side. And I Mitchell makes the catch. And they pick up six on first down. Yeah, good job up front. Offensive line that time, as you said, not we haven't seen him have that kind of time very much. And it's nice to see Mitchell get his hands on the football. Brooks makes a cut. As he does so often, just finds room in the middle, falls forward, another first down. This looks like more of what you'd expect. You know, they're buried inside 
their own five-yard line. And that big throw to Worthy seemed to really ignite this drive. And now they got a little bit of rhythm and momentum here. Off the play fake, Ewers checks it down. Brooks again makes a man miss. Shows the strength, and he's down near the marker. Billy Bowman eventually brought him down. Just get him the ball in space. He's going to come out of the backfield. And again, this defense, watch the backers sink. They want to make sure everything downfield, the threat of Mitchell. So that's okay. Let's make a miss. Wow. If he takes away Mitchell or the tight end behind, they're going to sink in coverage. I love that Ewers made a quick decision, just got the ball out quickly. Backs are in to get Brooks a breather, and the young fellow is going to be sworn behind the line. Dijon Terry, who had been out of the game, is back in, making the play. He is the Tennessee transfer, fifth-year guy. Usually known as a guy that just eats blocks, but with him reaching, you see that offense line working to their right, trying to reach, he's able to sneak in and penetrate into a gap. He needs six on third. Let's see if Sarkeesian is thinking about two plays to pick this up. Hand it off inside and knocked down two yards short of the marker is Baxter. Cannon got him down. So far, the offense is staying out there on fourth down. Yeah, he's reading McCullough on, on an RPO. The, the read gave him an indicator to hand that football off. Savian Red has come into the game. He's been the running back used frequently today as a Wildcat quarterback running and throwing. Texas, by the way, three for three on fourth down. Reds played a big role in that. And a penalty before the snap. False start. Offense, number 62, five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. And makes it fourth and eight, and that'll change Sarkeesian's thinking as the field goal team trots out. That's yeah, on the center. Robertson there. Again, filling in for Jake Majors, the top offensive lineman on this team, who was down with a leg injury early. So here comes Burt Auburn from 45. Made good on a chip shot earlier, but he struggled in recent weeks from distances just like this. In a swirling wind, he drives it through. That's an important field goal for Texas as they cut it to a seven-point margin. 153 in the third, 67-yard drive, ends in three. College football playoff national championship trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Hanging out here at the State Fair. I guess it's, it's home is what, Grapevine nearby here with the That's right. MVP headquarters? Yeah. January 8th in Houston is the championship game. So Texas was backed up at the beginning of that drive, way back at the five yard line, moved it down the field. The big conversion to Worthy there got him in position. And Auburn drives it through to make it a seven point game. Curtis Wilson on the All State bus. Made an appearance in Dallas. Now he's headed up to Seattle here. What's your All-State good hands play this weekend? Well, usually we're calling a night game, and it's easy to look and survey the whole country. Oh, wow. We're going to go way back to 01 in a 7-3 game late in this game. Roy Williams, the Superman play against Chris Sims, knocked that ball into the air, and Teddy Lehman caught it in the air, secured victory for the Sooners and Bob Stoops. One of those special teams plays by Texas. They fielded the punt way down inside the... 10 yard line that set that up. Sooners back to work. Farouk finds the edge. Look out, he can fly. Knocked out across the 40, a couple of steps away from really busting loose. What great job by these Oklahoma receivers. Drake Stoops, watch 12 out there. Nice block there. Good hustle downfield all around by that group. Nick Anderson, four involved. Batted away. Reaching up is Alfred Collins, the tackle. Well, we have not felt the presence of this Texas defensive front. We talked about this being a big factor in this game. How would Oklahoma deal with the Texas front? Jeff Levy and Dylan Gabriel have come up with a plan between the tempo and the different play calling. They have slowed down the front that time, knocked down by Collins. One sack by the Longhorns. They've affected Gabriel a few times, but not enough. 
He shows some pressure here. Gabriel has time, and it's batted down again. The time it was Anthony Hill, so back-to-back bat downs sets up a third and ten. Actually, he does a good, really good job here. He can't get to him, so he just does what most good linebackers do. They play with instincts. Eyes on the ball. I can't get to him. The ball's going to be out too quickly, so it's 6-3. He almost not only knocked that down, he timed it so well, I wouldn't have been shocked if he came down with an interception. Four of ten are the Sooners on third down. Sawchuk is in the game. Reliable pass protector. Let's see if they try to heat up Gabriel. It's Anthony coming across in motion, and a whistle and a timeout taken. Sooners spend the timeout here. Gabriel, just one of those guys that he makes all of his teammates, you know, feel important. He's got the knack. You come to this new program, you do what, what Baker Mayfield did. You step in from the outside, you, you ingratiate yourself, you show yourself to be a leader with your hard work. But he's just got he's just got the chemistry. He's got the the it factor, and he has ever since he was a high school star in Hawaii. Yeah, I mean, he had it when he was early in his career at UCF with Jeff Levy there, and you know it's continued throughout. Some of those guys just you have that naturally and he's been able to put that on display today Oklahoma as a team playing a much cleaner game than Texas Texas has three turnovers Oklahoma doesn't have any Texas has seven penalties Oklahoma only three and Texas has been sacked four times as you mentioned Oklahoma only giving up one sack. Gabriel on his way to UCLA when Caleb Williams left Oklahoma got into the portal Levy called him the day before his first class at Westwood and said guess what and he changed rapidly his mind and it's worked out beautifully for him third and ten Gabriel feels the pressure sidesteps it escapes and tries to get there with his legs gets a block on the edge but will not get there fought really hard but Derek Williams the true freshman in for Catalan made the tackle on the far side Collins right here wins forces him out of the pocket and then you're talking about a true freshman out in space getting off of a potential block by Drake Stoops and makes a play tell you, we're seeing glimpses of what Derek Williams has to offer to this Texas defense young man forced to play and he's doing a great job so while it's fourth down and drill Anthony is being looked at on the far sideline by the athletic training staff Holly well, you're talking about Dylan Gabriel's growth in Hawaii. Part of it started because his father was a terrific quarterback at the University of Hawaii. He has mentored and coached this young man since he was a little kid. He did get to meet Marcus Amariota for the first time when he was in third grade. He remembers it vividly, a jump rope for heart health event. He then later got a throw at St. Louis High School in Hawaii with Marcus and a bunch of other quarterbacks. And, guys, it's just the beginning. There's about two dozen uh, or a dozen different quarterbacks in college football right now who grew up in Hawaii and it's really good to see and Dylan Gabriel is making them proud. Here's the DNA. There were guys before Mariota. Timmy Chang played at Hawaii yeah. but you know, it was Mariota, Tua. Those guys were from St. Louis High School. Mililani is where Dylan comes from. That's where Mackenzie Milton played and of course he was the guy that led him to UCF and mentored him there. Kind of a big brother to Dylan. Yeah. It's cool to see that. Cool fraternity of guys and Right now, how about the way Tua is performing? There's Anthony clearly in some pain there, getting helped off. Tua having a heck of a, a year this year with the Dolphins. So how about this? The offense is on the field. They need almost two full yards to get to the 47. Well, he spreads them out. Walker is the back. They're going to try to get Texas to flinch, but they do run a play. Gabriel throws a slant far side, and Stoops could not come up with it. Michael Taff, a backup safety, made the play, and Texas with that stop has great field position. Well, that's all you could hope for for Dylan Gabriel. Ball to me is a little late and thrown behind downfield, but look at this cushion right here. You'll take that every single time. Ball up now. A little bit late and behind. Stoops is running out of room. But he went to the right target with that cushion into the boundary. But the wrong shoulder. Just felt, right? like, just felt like he got it out a little bit late. Now, because you roll the dice and go for it in a rivalry game, look at the field position for Quinn Ewers in the horns. Ewers, by the way, has completed his last 13 passes. Did have the fumble loss in the middle of that, but terrific rhythm throwing the ball. 
another high percentage throw to Brooks. He said, just get it to him in space, and he creates about a four-yard gain. Yeah, just take those completions all day. He wanted to go. He wanted to take a shot. Looked like Sark wanted to try to test the the defense after that turnover on downs. Taken away downfield, no problem. Check it down. At least get some positive yards. What a sudden change in this game. That that decision by Venables on the stop with the incompletion has given Texas a real chance. And Brooks turns the corner, bangs through tacklers, still running, powering down inside the 35. How about the right side of this offensive line, Campbell and Jones. Really good job on this right side. Watch them work the double team and then climb up to those backers. Look at that hole. I mean, you're letting Brooks get downhill into the teeth of that defense with speed. What more could you ask for? 119th Red River rivalry. The Longhorns and the Sooners battling in a one-score game. 15 minutes to play. Back after this message. And we're your local ABC station. Except for the fourth quarter. Aerial coverage brought to you today by Goodyear, celebrating their challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear, more driven. Which side, which individual going to make the plays here in this final quarter and be remembered forever? The great history of the Red River rivalry. Longhorns at the 34. And first down. And test the middle with Brooks, and that time he is stopped for no gain. That man, Jordan Kelly, who's kind of on the depth chart, he, he came in fresh. He's been making a big impact the last couple of seasons. Yeah, he's talking his, talking his talk, too, to the Texas team, letting them know. There's a second down run. Brooks makes a cut, wrestled down by Billy Bowman. It'll be third down at about five. You, know, you, you could argue here as we start this fourth quarter to 27-20 game with Oklahoma with everything at stake. This is as big a quarter of college football that we've seen all year with everything that's at stake. Biggest quarter these teams have played in a while. Right away, touch by Whittington is down to the one yard line. They played quick, they got him on a slant and he found a nice crease in that zone. Yeah, exactly right, he finds a crease and Oklahoma the secondary with their eyes into the backfield. Right here is the culprit. Safety moves from the middle over to the hash and a good job of recognizing that and getting the ball out quickly. Pressure was coming from his blind side, but he bites onto the fake to give yours just enough time. You're gonna like this, Kirk. Big Byron Murphy and Devondre Sweat, those studs of the defensive line, have been brought into this game to enhance the beat. Oh, boy. Lining up in the backfield. And they hand it off to Brooks behind all that. They couldn't create enough space. He stopped for nothing. Boy, good job of working around that. Get it, see all that size, no problem. He's gonna get downhill and work around that. <laughs> That's a great job by Kip Lewis, the redshirt freshman. Redshirt freshman, he just threw his body in between all those 300 pounders and made a great play. Now they go to the I formation. The fullback position, it's Murphy in front of Brooks, takes the pitch, and they're trying to push the pile. They won't get there. Desan McCullough on the stop, and the Sooners really making him earn this final yard. Hey, McCullough takes the fight to Murphy. He's not the biggest guy, but watch this hit. There's sweat right there, but watch this collision right here. Instead of sitting back waiting, bang, he hits him. And blew that play up. That's a heck of a job. The IU transfer. Guy that's been asked to play in space, kind of as a hybrid that time, going back to his old familiar down in the trenches. Still going with the jumbo formation. They haven't gained an inch in two plays. Brooks again. And again, they've got him behind the line. Oklahoma rises up with Danny Stutzman combining with Desan McCullough. It's fourth down and goal. But as big as you are, if you don't block this guy, you're not going to score running up the middle. Nobody picks up Stutzman, who's who's the, the ball hawk, the guy that makes all the tackles on this team. Smart, tough, instinctive. And you may have all that size, but you come very predictable when you go three straight. 
trying to run behind the big boys. That didn't work at all. Three plays, they lose a yard. Another fourth down play for the Longhorns. Got to hurry here. Play clock at four. They're going to throw for it. Worthy! Stop short! Four plays from the one. They can't get in. And Oklahoma goal line stand that just became part of the lore of this rivalry. Billy Bowman got there. Wow, what a moment. Are you kidding me? What a stand. Unbelievable. OU protecting a seven point lead. Back to work from the one. They reviewed it, and the call stands. Worthy was getting grabbed around the neck by Billy Bowman. His rear end hits the ball. is really close to breaking I mean, the plane right by. You're, you're talking inches, inches, and a huge stop. Mentioned four times from the one. That's how you build culture for a guy in his second year being a head coach. But if you're Gabriel in the shotgun, halfway deep in the end zone with Walker to your left, you got to be super careful. This again is the noisy end. The Texas crowd breathing down Gabriel's neck here. Hand off of the end zone. Breaking free is Walker. He's got a lot of breathing room. A first down out across the 13. How about that? Inside their one yard line. Pressure's on. You know, Texas, they're just trying to get penetration. They're trying to blow that play up in the backfield with that defensive line that they have. And instead, OU does exactly what they need to do. They get some good blocking angles and a good job of reading that play developed by Walker. Well, delay here. You had Stogner and Ethan Burke. They had their, their face masks locked together from battling there on the edge. Gabriel loops it down, field, caught. Oh, incomplete. Jaden Gibson had a step on Terrence Brooks. Had it right there, couldn't collect it. There's not a lot of room. Look how close he is to the sideline, but he gets a couple of steps on, and ball is perfectly thrown. Ball could not have been placed out there any better. Look at him on that right arm, grabbing onto it. That's, I'm not saying that for interference. I'm saying that to how he impacted Gibson from being able to get both his arms and hands up there to make that catch. That's what you're taught as a defensive back on those fades. Gibson, one of the big play weapons here that hasn't been involved yet today. Gabriel going to be swarmed by Anthony Hill. It's a short loss. And now a third and long coming up. That kid is a superstar, man. Hill is going to be a star in this defense. Again, a true freshman from Denton with the Ryan High School. 6'3", 234. They move him all around. What do you like here in third and 11, coach? <laughs> in this spot on the field, the ball, ball out better, fast. Ball better get out in a hurry. Texas not showing pressure. They only rush four. And Gabriel flush out. Pump fakes, takes off. It takes a big shot, but makes a first down. No sliding that time. Jet Bush hammered him, but the quarterback makes a play. Well, they brought pressure from here, from the outside. His blind side is picked up by Walker, and that's just Texas. The best player on their defense, Jalen Ford, was there, but just kind of frozen. Leaping attempt by Gibson. That time it's incomplete. A 12-yard scramble on third and 11 to keep the football up seven in the fourth quarter. One of the big keys for, for Texas was we got to keep Gabriel in the pocket, especially on third down. We cannot let him create. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to go out there and have to execute. You're worried about your left. You're worried about your right. You're worried about the pass. And then here he comes. So twitch, so twitchy in space. Gabriel again takes a quick peek and then takes off. Weaves his way through traffic. He's in the loose. Dylan Gabriel finally chased down at the Texas 30. Keaton Crawford saved the touchdown, but that's the run of his life. Again, watch the middle linebacker. He's right there, Jalen Ford. You're talking about, again, not just one of the best players on Texas, but 
one of the better linebackers in the country, just kind of slow to respond. Kirk, 44 yards in that play. Gabriel, a career high 110 yards in the Red River rivalry on the ground. He's such an added dimension to Jeff Levy's scheme of spread and attack and tempo. So much to think about, and then you got to worry about the quarterback's legs added to that. In Oklahoma, after making a goal line stand for the ages down there, trying to build on this lead, they've driven it from the one to the Texas 31. Sawchuk gets a rare carry and is swallowed up inside. It's third down and long again. What, what makes that tough is if you start worrying about the run game, you start worrying about him as a threat, you start putting your eyes in the backfield, they've got the receivers. And if you leave a one-on-one, -on -one, we saw Jaden Gibson had a one-on-one -on -one chance against Brooks. It was a great route, great throw. He just unable to hold on to it. But when you start worrying about him taking off and running, you're going to give yourself up to potential one-on-one -on -one shots downfield vertically. Very much in fringe field goal range for Schmidt if they don't gain a yard here in third 10. But it's Stogner making the catch. They get closer. He's a few yards short as Jaron Thompson got into the ground. There's an Oklahoma lineman still down on the field there. It looks like it's McCade Tyre, the right guard. But that pass designed to set up Schmidt in more comfortable field goal range. What a drive. Backed up to the one, muscles it down the field, 72 yards to set up a field goal try here. Back here in Dallas, the card taking McKay Matar, the 50 year senior guard, off his entire teammates coming across to wish him well. Poignant when it happens to a senior, one of the guys who's started for three years in the middle of the offensive line. Texas fans joining Oklahoma fans, by the way on their feet to applaud the big fella. Fourth and five, they will kick the field goal here. Zach Schmidt, reliable in his career between 40 and 49. He's made eight of 10. This is from 45 to make it a double digit lead. And it will slide wide right. Schmidt, a close call, but Texas still within seven with 7.55 to play. Wind swirling a bit in here. Don't know if it was a factor. It just drifted outside that right upright. The All-State Red River Rivalry on ABC is presented by Head & Shoulders. Make every wash count. In part by All-State. You're in good hands. And Chili's three for me. The best 1099 you can eat. Quinn Ewers was a young kid watching the game in the crowd. As he got to high school, he dreamed Kirk he might have a chance to be here and, and play part. Last year was a was a rout. This year has been tough and dramatic. And Ewers, who had two of his first six pass attempts intercepted today, is now in a run of 17 straight completions. Shown a lot of grit here. This game was a tough start for him in the offense. Brooks stacked up near the line of scrimmage by Jacob Lacey. See if Third down. Take advantage of that. Oh, we got a penalty here. Late penalty at the pile. Obviously going to be a dead ball foul. It's just which way is it going to go? It's Christian Jones, the right tackle, making his 41st start. He was number 70 in Texas involved Look, somewhat in this. He may potentially. Texas players say it's on OU, Kirk. Looked, okay. Well, Trace Ford was tangled up with him, and I don't know, it looked like he was kicking to get him off of him. Trace Ford went down. This is a really important call. Oh, my gosh. Huge. After the play, unsourced black conduct, necessary roughness, defense number 30. Yeah. 15 yard penalty and automatic first down. Instead of third and four, it's an automatic first down. The football will move near midfield. I think he pushes him initially. It was that, and then you can see the reaction by, by Texas's Christian Jones retaliating back. A lot of times they'll offset. The, First down yardage. 
And a wide parade is in the game, Kirk. You'll be happy about that. Young guys on the defensive line for, for Oklahoma, number 34. Talented young man. Just call him Double A. Double A. So, yeah. <laughs> so one of those loss of poise penalties for the Sooners, and Longhorn set up at the 47. They fake it to Brooks. The flag is down. Ewers across the middle. Loops it high. Tried to get it to Whittington. Incomplete. The flag was out very yeah, quickly. It's on Mitchell. His motion. He started to lean before the ball was snapped. Started to cheat towards the line of scrimmage. Legal shift. Legal motion. motion. Offense number five. Moving forward at the snap. Five yard penalty. Still first down. So they'll take the penalty moving back five instead of the incompletion. Keep, wait, keep waiting for him to make yeah, a play, I was right? Say that. Yeah, yep. here, here he is in motion. Watch how he starts a little bit too early. That's why the flag came out so quickly. It's two catches for 17 yards for Mitchell. He was in first and 15, feels pressure, rolls back to his right and flips it. There's Whittington who makes the catch, knocked out at the 40 for a first down by Bowman. Boy, does he have that quick flick. You know, that ball gets out of his hands so nicely. Good job. This is where that mobility comes into play. You see that safety starts to come down to appreciate the threat of viewers maybe scrambling and created a big lane behind him. Easy throw, an easy read. 18th consecutive completion ties viewers with Colt McCoy. That's 19 of the new record. Whittington gets a block and is being wrestled down inside the 30 by Bowman. Holly? Guys, major injury news right now. Gentry Williams, the starting cornerback for the seniors, has been taken to the locker room in his place. Kendall Doby is out there right now, number 15. Keep your eye on the secondary. Williams had a big afternoon. Made the pick early. Now Brooks makes a cut. It's base. Brooks accelerates. Texas touchdown. Jonathan Brooks. Having a Bijan Robinson tight afternoon. Pick it up with a Longhorn great left off. 29-yard touchdown. A point away from tying this football game. Well, you gotta get you gotta win on the edge. Ogbo in number 80 at tight end. He's a glorified offensive lineman. Look at the patience and then the yeah, able to get upfield vertically. That is just Jonathan Brooks in a nutshell, and he points to that forearm of his appreciating his late father. Auburn, low kick, drives it through to Texas off that narrow miss on the field goal, takes it 73 yards and five plays, and honoring his father with a touchdown that you know he must be appreciating. Tie ball game. Fierce, physical, what you'd expect. This feels like two heavyweights. Texas earned that status by winning earlier at Alabama. Oklahoma still ranked outside the top 10, trying to show that it belongs in that conversation. And this is Farouk from the three. Jaleel Farouk, ooh, flashes that speed. Will Stone, the kickoff man, had to force him out of bounds. Back to the touchdown. Let's go back to this, and again, Jonathan Brooks with the patience, some great blocks, lets the blocks set themselves up. He's emerging as one of the top running backs to me in college football, and what he's been able to do, balancing out this offense with viewers in his passing game. Look at the emotion. This kid plays with a lot of composure. Had the two turnovers early, fought through it. There you see his emotion, and there's Jonathan Brooks pointing to that date, 3-18-22, when he lost his dad. Inspire performance. This is Stoops on the end around, makes a cut, and dragged down after a solid first young game. Walker made a block on the edge. This is where legacies are built, right? Rivalry game, 27-27, under six minutes to go. Both teams undefeated. Oklahoma had a chance to go up double digits, that narrow miss on the field goal. Now it's a tie game and a swarming play. Devondre Sweat got out to the edge, got Walker to the ground, and now it's third down and five. Boy, that's a great job of getting off the block. 
you know, he, such size, a double team. See how he extends with his arms, sheds to block. Again, he's, you got to keep in mind, he's 362 pounds to be able to be that nimble and quick and be able to get off that block. Gabriel dealing with the noise at this left end of the stadium. Sanson delivers, but a high fastball, and Stogner couldn't come up with it. Gabriel and this offense, Kirk, have not been able to click in some crucial potential conversions here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and, and you, when you're on the right hash and you go into the boundary, there's just not a lot of room to work. And you got to get that ball out in a hurry. And instead of it getting out on time, he makes up for it by throwing it with a lot of velocity. Tough ask by St for Stogner to worry about, am I going to get my feet in? And then here comes a 95-mile-an-hour fastball coming right at you. There's Xavier Worthy awaiting the punt of Josh Plaster. Special teams have been not just important but adventurous today. Plaster kind of bobbled the snap. It's a low kick, which will bounce. And Worthy feels it just at the last second. Bearing down on him was Peyton Bowen, that freshman special team star. A risky play for the veteran and a crucial 50-yard punt for Plaster. But Bowen blocked those two punts earlier. He's got a bright future. He was hoping that Worthy might try to put his hands on it. Mentioned legacy skirt. Here we go. And that's Ewer's turn. A disastrous start to this game. He's recovered nicely. Got a record string of consecutive completions going 19 in a row. 449 to play in regulation. He's got Brooks, the hot hand behind him. They fake it to him. Yours launching downfield for Worthy. Coming back, and it's broken up beautifully by Woody Washington. Longhorns wanted a flag. There isn't one. Well, I think Worthy, if he would have stopped running downfield and worked even harder back to the football, he, he could have drawn a potential penalty. There's contact there. Mm. Bill, what do you think? I mean, super slow-mo, it looks like obvious pass interference, but in real time, what do you think? Real time, I thought it was, it was a good play, but watching that angle there, he got into him early with the body, even though he turned back for the ball. Worthy this time settles in the zone, makes the catch. The, the string is snapped at 19 straight completions, but Ewer shakes it off right back to work. Yeah, that, that's who he is, right? Comes right back to an RPO, gets the ball out in a hurry. Should mention, Key Lawrence is no longer playing safety. He's now playing corner. Yours right there again finds a man open. It's worthy in space picking on the man you mentioned Yeah, that's why I, the reason I bring that up is he's a safety This is a, a really tough thing to, to ask of a safety to be out there on an island if Quinn yours and, and Sark are smart I think they attack him especially if you don't have safety support behind him. Playing fast yours looking to launch again, and now he'll just check it down Brooks on the edge Plows forward there in midfield picked up another nice chunk on first down now, Holly mentioned Dolby going in for Gentry Williams now that they, they, Dolby's on the sideline They moved Lawrence in there and and when you're a safety moving the corner now Dolby actually comes back into the game Brooks patient very patient finally will muscle right near the marker interesting how you play this now Oklahoma's got a couple timeouts, three and a half minutes. The clock can move pretty quickly with the new rules outside of two minutes here. How, how much of in a hurry does Sark want to be at this moment? I, I don't think he is. Oklahoma has spent one of their timeouts earlier. You stay with your game plan. You know, you're mixing up the tempos. Brooks sets forward, falls forward for about four. It's still some big time collisions going on down there. Instead of Stutzman, that time it's Kenick meeting him in the hole with positive yards for the Horns on that first and 10 play. They're playing with Tempo here, believing they got the Sooners defense kind of on the ropes. On the slant, Worthy makes the catch, absorbs the hit from Bowen, holds on, and it's a first out of the 35. Yeah, they used the motion, and I think that affects things. Stutzman ends up coming down. You see this motion by Sanders. Now watch Stutzman blitz here. Good job seeing that by yours. Look at that vacancy right behind that blitz. Saw the collision, as you said. It's been featured from the first snap, and Bowman took the shot from the receiver. He tried to get up and play through it, then he just went down to one knee. 
already very depleted in the secondary. You know, this is exactly what you expect to see as so many games before it in these series. Hard hits, wild plays, wacky stuff. A number of plays that could potentially be part of the lore and legacy of this game and these individual guys. And now here we go. Two and a half to go. Texas on the march. Two and a half to go. I, I, this is not a point in the game where you're worried about, hey, let's kill some clock. Now, if you get down inside the 20 and you start to put that point, think about maybe that consideration. But right now, that is not the case at all. They're just trying to continue to execute. Been so impressed with Quinn Ewers today. You know, playing quarterback is not just about throwing it around in shorts and a t-shirt. You know, when he was in high school, he got a lot of fanfare, a lot of recognition. When you really earn your stripes as a quarterback, a guy, you think of any NFL guy who's become a legend, it's what you do in these kind of moments, leading a football team, going through, throwing a couple of picks early, withstanding that, enduring that, and continuing to play with poise. That's what we've seen today from number three. Longhorns asking for quiet from their crowd. Bowman taken to the sidelines. And first down, Ewers is going to be swallowed up and sacked. Jacob Lacey, the Notre Dame transfer, sixth sack. Yeah, they slant this defensive line right through this gap right here. Affects the communication. He kind of gets lost there. Keep in mind now, you got the backup center, who, by the way, he's done a heck of a job. Connor Robertson in for. Jake Majors, first time we've really seen some penetration there, and it was a slant. Good call there by Brent Venables. Using the depth on this defense, something they didn't have a year ago. Worthy on the edge, gets a couple blocks, cuts, and that was a nice play. Cutting inside was Peyton Bowen, that had freshman to prevent a bigger gain. Here we go. Third down. Not in field goal range yet. They need nine. A lot of rotating, continuing of the rotation of the bodies up front for Oklahoma. They need to affect Ewers by getting penetration, trying to get him off his spot. Mitchell down here. We keep calling for him, Chris, down here at the bottom. We're going to get a timeout. Oklahoma will spend a timeout. Black ticking down. Balls at the 35. That would make it about a 52-yard field goal attempt for Bert Auburn. He wasn't trying it from that distance in warm-up anything sort of beyond 45 48 yards is tricky here's the good year college football rankings have been talking about that ohio state battle but they, they pulled away now 20 point lead against maryland yeah you knew maryland had the offense to potentially challenge ohio state but looks like they've settled in florida state virginia tech coming up next on abc to see at the bottom it's one of those days you just kick your feet up and watch college football all day like every saturday Notre Dame and, and Louisville coming up later tonight. Irish getting challenged for the third week in a row. Ohio State game, the Duke game last week, and now on the road against undefeated Jeff Brom in Louisville. The Texas offense out there. Sooners still huddle up with Venables in their sideline. So they spend the time out there and have one to work with the rest of the way. Just on the outer fringe of field goal range for this third and nine. Brooks breaks a tackle. He's wrestled down inside the 30. And Sarkeesian clearly, well, hoping his back would bust one as he has a lot, but playing for an improved field goal try here. Oklahoma spends their last time out with a minute 22. No, it's the beauty of having a, a runner that can get some tough yards for you. You're right. It, it, I mean, he, you think of Sark, you think of maybe throwing it, maybe trusting a quarterback, maybe drawing up a ball play to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Instead, he goes more the conservative route on third down just to give himself a better chance at this potential go-ahead score. OU now out of timeouts more than anything. That's Remember how quickly they can move, though. Their offense, a minute 22, if they're executing, that's not the issue, even though they're out of timeouts. So Auburn made a couple today. It's been a tricky, swirling win. Could have played a part in the narrow miss by Schmidt for Oklahoma earlier in the quarter. Pre-game, 
This direction was kicking into a pretty stiff breeze. It looks to me like it's died down a little bit. And Sark's sending the offense out now. Wow. Yeah, so I don't know if he's got, he's got the timeout, so I don't know if he's messing around here, going to try to draw him off, try to get a cheap one here to get a first down, or and then call a timeout late, or what he's doing. Sooners are running around. They have the field goal block team out there trying to get a defense set up, see if they run a play. They are nowhere near organized. Longhorns need four if they snap it. it looks like they're just trying to, yeah, he's just trying to get the Sooners to jump. And we'll spend the time out worth a try. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting here talking about the game. I'm, I'm looking at the huddle. I'm like, wait a second, three? <laughs> Is he? There's no way he'd go for this. Oh, you wasn't fooled ultimately. Well, this is why you practice, right? You're over on that far field as a specialist. During those dog days of summer, over there working, focus, getting ready for this kind of opportunity. You dream about this yep. opportunity as a kicker. You hope it comes down to a tie game, and there's Sark talking to him. Quarterbacks have their dreams. Jeff Banks. Kickers right. have their kind of dreams, too. Yeah. Sark was with him pregame, trying to loosen him up and still confidence. You know, Auburn has missed a couple in recent weeks. He's been solid so far today. Dead center from 47 yards to put the Longhorns in front with a minute 22 to go. Drives it. Clutch. Auburn with plenty of distance to spare comes up big. Texas was down 10. He's now up three. Dylan Gabriel, your turn. No timeouts, but a minute 17 to play with. And that is clutch. Auburn just steps right into the moment and doesn't flinch. Beautiful Texas sky. That ball goes right through the uprights. What a day for Sark and Jeff Banks, a special teams coordinator and how much of an impact it's not over but the specialists have had that third phase of the game for the horns number OU at the end of the first half had a nine play 67 yard drive ended up at a field goal it took about a minute 53 now they got a minute 15 or so here Gabriel has lost I think a little bit of rhythm here in the fourth quarter curve OU hasn't scored a couple of makeable throws on third and fourth down conversions. Yeah, this, this kid wants this moment as well. No, he's built for this. Woody Washington coming down the corner to talk to him. It's a guy that didn't get to play in this game last year. Now he's down three with no timeouts. Can Farouk create some field position? Very dangerous returner today. Stone drives it right through the back of the end zone, says forget the return. So here we go. Dylan Gabriel denied the chance to be on this field. Ripped his heart out to have to watch with a concussion. And be a hero in the Red River rivalry. Offensive line has some backups in there. They've got to hold up, give him time. But they are built not only for this because of their moxie and their attitude, but their scheme. They go as fast as anybody in the country. So the first thing they need, first thing they need is that first first down to get their tempo going. How aggressive will Texas play it? They only rush three, dropping the coverage. Gabriel across the middle, and it's complete for a first down. He found Stoops. Put your seatbelt on. That's what they not. That's what they wanted. Now just a matter of getting lined up. Texas got to be ready to be aggressive, not be conservative. Sitting back. Long throw. Catch made. Farouk makes one man miss, and suddenly in a couple of plays, they're in Texas territory. That's two plays, and he gets out of bounds. I mean, that that's what this offense can do for you. Farouk now is having just a huge day. 130 yards on the day receiving. Gabriel, pocket collapsing, he escapes, flips it across the middle, and Stoops running free. And the legend's son moves the football down into the red zone in the final minute. Boy, Jalen Ford came up. Remember, he's been lost when Gabriel's run. That time he came up, and it opened up a throw to Stoops. Gabriel pump fake. 
launching for the end zone, incomplete. There was a battle on the far sideline, and a flag comes out. Brooks was defending Nick Anderson. A slant and go, and Brooks essentially tackles him because he bit on the slant. As he went by him, he just grabbed onto him, so a good call by the officials. Pass interference, defense number eight. Automatic first down, just called the foul. But Gabriel and his playmakers have moved the ball down in 28 seconds here inside the 10. It was a aggressive pylon cam showing to the end of that slant and go, but an obvious pass interference and the right call. It's going to be Tawee Walker show in the backfield. Holly reporting Marcus Major not available out of this game. First down. And the throw for it. Now he'll take off. And knocked down at the three. Texas has timeouts. Will they spend it here? I, I think Texas is just going to hope that their defense can hold on here. OU's got to throw incompletions or score. They cannot afford to get tackled inbounds. Gabriel. Blanches touchdown! Nick Anderson! His first catch of the football game. Younger brother, Rodney Anderson, former Oklahoma running back, has put the Sooners on top with 15 seconds to play. Epic drive by Gabriel. He said he's built for this. <laughs> well, he delivered. So often I talk about, look how fired up Gabriel, man, good for him. So often I talk about what happens before the play. Well, here's another example of that with Nick Anderson going in motion. Watch the reaction from Texas right in the back as he responds. He calls it off, says, hey, you got him, you got him. Now watch the Texas reaction here once he goes into motion. He said, you got him, I got him? Who has him? I don't have him. And then he's lost. So a miscommunication on the back end from the Texas secondary with that pre-snap movement created doubt and hesitation by Jaron Thompson. They weren't quite sure who had him matched up man to man. He sneaks into that back of the end zone. And how about the line giving Gabriel enough time to get that read and make that throw? You know, Anderson zone is a big play guy. Kirk is average of 28 yards a catch. It's one of the best in FBS. That's a three-yard catch that he'll never forget. Gabriel, four for four on the drive. His first touchdown pass of the football game gives him a four-point lead. We talk about legacies being built in these games. Still 15 seconds to go, but what a performance in a drive by number eight, Dylan Gabriel in this Oklahoma offense. Clutch. They didn't come after him early in the drive. They, they dropped eight into coverage. He was able to get the ball out pretty calmly, get the drive going, and crank that tempo. Again, their, their system is built, even though you're out of timeouts, they're built for that. We saw it at the end of the first half. We saw it at the end of this game. Jeff Levy deserves a ton of credit for putting this, this plan together and putting his quarterback in this offense in a position to be able to make those plays late. What a call there at the end with that motion, create that doubt, and then the touchdown. Let's that, see if Ewers can make something happen. Yeah, he needs to get 75 yards into the end zone. Does have a couple of timeouts, but only 15 seconds. They throw it underneath a short piece. Whittington just wants to get down. Breaks three at the 40 feet. They'll spend a timeout, and now they're in sort of Hail Mary position. Yeah, a lot of dancing around. I mean, you just got to get north and south in this situation. Every second matters. Just get north and south, get down, and call a timeout. 
you wonder if you try to, with at least a one timeout, do you try something where you can throw it for 10 or 12 or 15 yards, catch the football, get down, and then it becomes maybe a little bit more realistic if you're at plus 40 as opposed to the ball being at your own 44. I think Sark with that extra timeout takes a shot to get a little bit closer before you just heave it up and hope. Mililani, Hawaii is where Gabriel's from. It's a small town. If you go from Honolulu up to the North Shore, you, you pass through it. It's a kind of a bucolic setting. He goes from there to UCF, plays three years, is going to go to UCLA, gets rerouted to Norman, couldn't play here a year ago. You can write a screenplay about his story alone, but, but also just about this game. Last play coming up. Can yours conjure a miracle? He's got a I mean, if he wants to throw it over here, he's got obviously a chance to just get some yards. They can go left. They can call yep, it they'll go down. underneath there there. there. They use four seconds, two remain, and the ball is at the 44. Yeah, there's the call right there. Smart. Sark's, Sark's now going to use that last time out. By the way, this is one of those games you want to see the fifth quarter. <laughs> you know, and it's like with the new Big 12, without the divisions, you probably, chances are, you're going to get it. In the Big 12 championship game. Yes, you want to see a sequel? Yeah. Orders, 20 miles west of here in Arlington? Yeah, that's right. West Virginia's in the mix. Yeah. West Virginia doesn't because play Texas. They do play Oklahoma. But, yeah, you wouldn't bet against these two teams Man. being the top two. No divisions, of course. What a battle. I, what I love about this battle is there's ebb and flow. And, oh. and it's like, okay, one team's going to pull away. No, no. This team that faces them some tough times and some obstacles and some adversity they, they come storming back and then it looks like they're in control and then the other side comes back so man what a what a game to grow from for both these teams they used to call it the bronze hat but that didn't fit this is this is oh you in texas and then they printed into the golden hat that's been going since get ready world war ii era it comes off that thing and it is put on the head and it's the photos and the social it media. Is. It's going to be everywhere. You've earned the right to put that hat on today if you emerge victorious in Red River rivalry number 119. So you got off to the right. You got Mitchell, who's 6'4". Sanders is over there. He's at 6'4". All the OU defenders, a lot of them, six of them standing on the goal line waiting for the throw. Ewers hoping for time to launch. They come after him. Does step forward. Hit as he throws. A high ball near the goal line. Broke it up. Bat it down. Oklahoma wins it. The North Global football team coming off a six and seven season in year two for Venables. He said, I don't know if we're a championship team. We're not there yet. We're taking steps. They took a monster step today as Dylan Gabriel leads him down the field for the winning touchdown. He's with Holly. Well, Dylan, you took the field with a minute 17 to go, a final drive. What did you say to your teammates and to yourself so you could execute on that drive? We do it every Wednesday. We do it every Wednesday. This is what OU football is all about. This is why I came here. This game, a lot of respect for Texas, man. They played their butt off. Quinn's a hell of a cues. I mean, they, they play really well, so it is what it is. At the end of the day, making plays, and Nick made a play, so let's do this. You made a great play in the red zone. You had to rise up, jump up to make that throw over the offensive line. What did you see, and how did you complete it? They called me last night. He told me do whatever it takes. So you know what I'm saying? I, I'm all about OU football. I love this place. This is what college football is all about. Let's go. This is your first time playing in this game. Legends are made in this game. What should they say about Dylan Gabriel and your Sooners after this? I love my teammates. I love my team. That's always what I've been about, man. And God is good. God is good. Go enjoy this win, young man. Thank you. He's a man of deep faith. He uses the sign of the cross to center himself before he takes the field for every possession. The flag has been planted. The golden hat is in the middle of that humanity in the middle of the field. <laughs> They'll pass that around like it's the Stanley Cup, right? This is a cool shot. Look at that. Look at that. 
half of the stadium dejected, the other half pure elation. Look at every single person left with memories they won't forget. <laughs> They're going to meet again, more than likely.